Hello, mates. Welcome to Absolute Pandemonium. As you can see, we got everybody up and going. It's a little bit late. I apologize on that one. The uh, the corkscrew wanted to go missing from a mead bottle. So, about that. But anyway, <laughs> let's go ahead and get this thing cracking. Let me get this record button because I always forget to do that. And we're going to make sure that we... We have those things today. Uh, let's see if the uh, the intro will work will work out for us. So, one time for the one time. And of course not, because you know that'd be like right or something y'all don't hear it either do you i hear it oh you hear it okay well good yeah i hear it too hey hey well that's great then because i sure as heck can't hear it but hey as long as y'all can hear it that's all that matters so episode four ladies and gents we are in here we are back uh, how y'all week been? How's it going? Black. Black. That's a good answer. That is a very good answer. That's Extremely black. good answer. <laughs> we on the wild tonight. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm being classy. Classy. Actually, I might be a classic early. man. Have a, a date night tonight. Oh. oh, okay, okay. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Well, this episode may not last as long as our normal ones. This may be a uh, a two hour gig, so we'll kind of see where we where we end up at that point in time. Uh, we may or may not have a guest coming in. I'm hoping uh, that we may be able to. We will see, but yeah. Um, so let's get into it. Let's get into it. We're gonna start off with what we starting off with sports today. Okay. Okay. We're gonna start off with sports today, and today I'm not remember. I don't remember who it was. I think it was Rod who brought this up earlier. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch the screen over here real quick. Did Jordan ruin basketball? What? Did Jordan? Ruin basketball, and that is that is what we've got Pippen saying here in his memoir. I guess his new book called The Unguarded. Unguarded. So the first one he says, I may go as far as to say that Mike ruined basketball. Okay. Next he says, in the '80s on the playgrounds, you'd have everyone moving the ball around, passing, help the team. That stopped in the '90s, which is the Jordan era. Uh, kids wanted to be like Mike. Well, Mike didn't want to pass, rebound, or defend the best. And then finally, he says he, he jumps into that old conversation, that 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 long fought battle of mm -hmm. that's why I always believe LeBron James is the greatest player. He does everything. Mm -hmm. So what are y'all thoughts on that? Yo. Um... Last week. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm a, this is a good question. It's a very good question. Okay. Oh yeah, who who want to go first? Well, since who, I brought whoever. the topic to the table, I can start this off. Go Easy. for it. All right, because it's an excellent question, and I think Scotty made some points. He is right about everybody who didn't want to be like Mike in the nineties. He's not lying there. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I would say LeBron is the greatest. He could have threw Magic in there. I know some people like to throw Magic in there as well. I mean, we all grew up in that era too. We had the Jordan versus Magic arg arguments too. Yeah. We all of a certain yeah. age here. So I would say he has some points. LeBron does do a lot of everything, but I think I think LeBron just and he came up in a weird. He came in came in at the second half of Kobe's career too. So. That's okay. something you, you got to hold that against him. Jordan did was a game changer, just like Bird was a game changer. Magic oh, was a game Oh, very much changer. so. I mean, shoot, you go all the way back to shoot, Wolf, to Wolf being a game changer. You go all the yeah. way that far back. Yeah. He was the game changer of that era. LeBron's a game changer. 
So, I mean, if you're going game changer to game changer, then it's a whole other story. But I was discussing this with my girl, my girl earlier because she was she was an Anthony Harder. She was, it was a funny story. She said she did a, a paper, a school project about how Anthony Hardaway was a better player than Jordan and got an A on it. I was like, <laughs> and I was like, the paper. I, that teacher was biased. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> We're going to put oh, that on the table. <laughs> I was like, wow. I was like, wow. Because Maybe I was a... to the point. You never know. It's possible. Yeah. It's possible. Because yeah. she made the same point because she felt like Jordan was a ball. He didn't let people get as much shine as everybody else when the game of basketball. He had five players mm -hmm. on the court. And Jordan wasn't one with the majority of the ball in his hand a lot. Which, you know, okay. is a criticism of a lot of other players. I, Being an AI fan myself, I always heard this critique about Iverson. Oh, Iverson holds the ball too much. He does this. He does that. Blah, 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 blah. I can go all day about that. Of course. Because I used to say, I'll get back to my joke, but I used to always say AI was the Beyonce of the NBA. I got roasted on Facebook for that, but I will defend. <laughs> I will, as a hill, I will hill die. die on. <laughs> I will die on that hill. AI was the Beyonce of the NBA at his time. At his peak, he was Beyonce. At his peak, okay. he was Beyonce. But getting back to Jordan here, what I would say is Jordan did change the game because be like Mike. That I mean, you heard that everywhere in the nineties. Oh, that was all. I want to be like yeah. Mike. Mm -hmm. Everybody wanted to do ISO. Everybody wanted to do Jordan. Everybody wanted to do the the fadeaways and all that. Yep. We went through a, a whole era, and they got LeBron doing more ISO. I mean, we had a whole era of ISO players too. I mean, Iverson was ISO. Carmelo was ISO. A lot of the slashers and. People who were like Jordan style got injured. Penny, Grand Hill, all those type of slashers or double or players who play like Jordan style got injured in the nineties. So that's mm. that style kind of evolved or went in a different direction. Even now, you can't play the way Jordan played in the nineties. You can't play that in modern NBA. Even as I'm slowly acclimating myself back into the NBA, that style just does not work anymore. I wish no. it did, but it doesn't. It's more of a shooter's game now. Jordan probably would have thrived in this era because he was more of a – with his fadeaway, he probably would have been even more deadly now than he was back then. But that's an argument for another day. I mean, that, but that argument right there, like – and I think that's one thing that people have to realize. You cannot bring old talent into new eras and vice versa because the new talent, the talent of today would not have been what it is today. And I'm not going to say it wouldn't have been. It would have probably evolved in its own pace and things of that nature. But – it probably would not have grown the direction it did without those who came before. That's what I would say. So I don't even think the game would be the same without your Jordans, your Pippins, your Rodmans, your, your Reggie Millers, your uh, Larry Birds, your Will Chamberlains. You know what I mean? Without their gameplay, Magic Johnson, without their styles of gameplay that influenced all these people today, I don't think – I know the game would have evolved – but it's there is no way to imagine probably what it would look like. You know what I mean? Like, let's say you had, we'll take LeBron. Let's say LeBron and Jordan had switched time eras, right? And so you got this guy, he's he's huge, he's coming in playing all these different positions. You know what I mean? He's passing the ball instead of doing the whole Jordan thing. Would Jordan coming out now? Would he be seen as Jordan, the monster? You know what I mean? That he was. Mm. Because now he's being seen as a ball hog. I mean, he was seen as that before. You know what I'm saying? But if, if everything was built around the whole team dynamic, then would, his, would he have been considered as great now for being who he was? That's an interesting question because that's, that's what that would be answered. It would and it wouldn't. I agree. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think about it, and I'm thinking about it. I'm gonna just play devil's advocate here for a second. I'm gonna play a little devil's advocate. But let's say if LeBron and Jordan switch out, let's say Jordan was 03 and LeBron was 84. Now we're talking something different. Now, honestly, I would think LeBron would probably be more magic than he is now. That's probably a legit argument because he's about okay. this thing. He's probably about the same size as Magic was in his prime. Maybe not weight wise, but height wise. Mm -hmm. So they would definitely be about the same height, about the same build. Okay. And he's coming into the nineties. Now the training wouldn't be what it is now. That would probably be an X factor. 
with this. But just okay. like you said, with Panda, we're bringing everything back. You also have to think about the training and regimen. Will LeBron be training as much or even do some of the stuff that he does now with his body back in the 80s and 90s? So you right. made an excellent point, bringing like, different players going to different areas. You have to think about technology, medicine. Mm-hmm. Even back then, like, let's say, be honest, maybe if Penny or maybe even Grand Hill or some of the other athletes – that broke down in the nineties. They're playing now. They probably would have sat out two, three years and came back. They want to probably have respect to their teams. Right. Yeah. I can see that. I can see that. Now let's take another thing into consideration. This is something I don't think people uh, look at as li- genetically. As time has gone on, humans have gotten taller generationally. People have gotten bigger. You get what I'm saying? I ain't gonna be able to say that. You're taking all my points. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we, hey, we said jump in, all, bro. Hey. <laughs> go ahead. I'll let you go hey. ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. It, so I agree with Pippen to an extent. I'm not okay. saying he messed up the game. I'm saying he changed the game. Everybody can agree with that. Yeah. The fact of the matter, if it wasn't Jordan, it was going to be somebody else. Mm-hmm. Strictly because generations grow regardless. They're going to grow one way or another. You know, we would uh, let's just say Jordan didn't come to the league. Look at all of the people in the league. Let's say Reggie Miller, because he was in the air. Let's say Reggie oh, Miller yeah. was the player instead of Jordan. We would have had the Curries before we had everybody else. It don't. It, it it's just something that's gonna happen. Like as of now, we're in a shooters sport right now. If you can't shoot, they don't want. You. Look at Ben Simmons. Look at, look at Ben. Simmons. If you can't shoot, it's hard to you know find your place in this league. You have to be able to shoot. And in Jordan Air, you had to be able to ISO. You had to have that player that can ISO and and do for him. And then the other players. Basically, 90s was a star and role players game. You had to have a star, and you had to have everybody else be a role player. They don't shine with no star shine, right. pretty much. But the fact of the matter is, when people throw LeBron to the mix with Jordan, people got to understand this generation gap and genetics, because LeBron is huge, both as tall and wide compared to Jordan in the NBA. Mm-hmm. You gotta understand. Right. Everybody has that person or that that summit on the mountain to where they want to reach. Oh, hold up, up one second. We gotta pause. We gotta pause. We gotta pause. We gotta pause. We got, pause. We got, pause. We got our guest J Star from Starbreaker Radio was able to join us. Yo, J. Hey, how's, how's it going? going? Good, how's good. It doing, Appreciate man? it. Hey, I must have came in at the right time because you guys are talking basketball in the era that I was watching. So, yeah, you, um, <laughs> you guys so have here. some really good points. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming we're talking about uh, LeBron and and how uh, he would have been back in that day. So, a little mm, bit. I'll, I'll actually do a quick we, recap um, for you. I'll let we, you explain, fam. You good? We had a um, we had a little situation here, and this is what it was: Pippen's new book. He's saying Jordan ruined basketball. And so his reasonings were, and let me put it back up here. uh, He was saying that, you know, everybody was moving around. There were team players back then, 90s hit. Jordan started being, you know, everybody want to be like Mike. So there's no passing anymore. There's no rebound and defending. And so that was his his thing. So he thinks LeBron James is the greatest player ever do it because of those types of situations. And so that's where we're kind of how we're getting into that, you know, era, the generational stats, things of that nature. What's your what's your take? Well, uh, I have actually came across this conversation a couple of times, whether it was on TikTok or on other podcasts. Um, we could all agree that Jordan was a different type of player who did change the game of basketball during that era. And now in days, LeBron is that player at the moment um jordan's always said five always beat one it didn't matter if you had one superstar on the team five players beat the one 
Uh, Pippen turning around, saying what he's saying. I'm not going to lie. I, I, I have a feeling that Pippen has a little bit of shade uh, toward <laughs> MJ a little bit. A only shade. because yeah. um, he w- I, I feel like he was supposed to be the star player of, of uh, the Bulls after uh, Jordan left. And mm-hmm. Pippen carried that team when Jordan was gone um, during his mm-hmm. first retirement. And then when Jordan came back, Pippen was like, no, these are my Bulls. And you already know how Jordan's mentality is. Like, nah, this is my team. So uh, I don't think Pippen took too lightly with that, thinking that, oh, well, you were gone. I was carrying, and now you're back. You're going to just pick up where I left off? No way. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's where you had the game where Pippen decided he was going to sit out the rest of the game. Um, Which that was – you saw the the difference in that game immediately. Like the entire team was like – they were split at that point, yeah. the rest of that like, game. So it was like, who do you follow? Cause this guy picked up the team when he left and now he's back and he's trying to take that role again. So, um, that it was, it was definitely a, it was definitely an interesting situation for that. And you could see it nowadays, uh, how Pippen talks about Jordan and, and, uh, the bulls back in the day. Um, personally for me, I think, LeBron would would have probably have gotten as far as his second or third year in basketball, and then we would have never heard his name again if he played in the same era, only because of teams like the Detroit Pistons back in the day. Mm -hmm. The way they shut down Michael Jordan as physically as they played. (laughs) Um, I mean, you had people like Reggie Miller who would make you look like a fool if you think you were posting up on him. You had people like Gary Payton, the glove, who would shut yes. you down even if you were a great basketball player. So LeBron could have made an impact, but I don't think he would have made that much of an impact that he is today. I think he was born and played the game in the right era. Like, if he would have showed up any other era, I don't think we would be saying the name LeBron James as often as we do now. Okay. Okay, infamous. What? What was you? You were in the middle of something there, and I kind of cut you off. I apologize. I wanted to get him in real quick so we can get him, get him into the conversation. Go ahead. Yeah, you good. But um, like like I was saying, the games evolve no matter what, and it's a cycle. The sport really does change stuff for a few rules once in a while. So back in before we even had a three point line, we had you know the dunkers and the the cutters. Then we got three point line. It was the era of the shooters because that's how they won games. Then you got, you know, the Magic Bird era. Then you got the Jordan era, the era of the ISO. You're coming from the ISO to the era of the ball halls with um, rest in peace, Kobe and the AI going on to LeBron being a facilitator and uh, a multiple position. I think that was the area that people missed, the multiple position era, when you had people playing two or three different positions a night. Mm-hmm. Coming on to now, when we're in the shoot era. Yeah, just, you know one thing I would love to see it, when you're talking about that shooting era. Big thing. No, understandable. The one thing I would love to see when you're talking about the shooting era, I would love to see a shootout between Reggie Miller, Larry Bird, and Steph Curry. Add Ray Allen to that, and I'll pay to watch. I was, Allen. I was just yes. about to say that. Yes. I was just about to say <laughs> that. Add Ray Allen to that. I'll pay to watch that one. Yes. Pay per view, sixty yep. bucks. Take your I, money. I, 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 would, I would like to. Say. Can we throw clay in? There? Amazing. That would have been amazing. Can, can we throw clay? I like clay. I'm with it. We can throw him in there. I'm with it. Yeah, I need five for a good three point shootout. So, all right, clay can come. <laughs> so, <laughs> actually, on a side point for that, he actually Curry just passed Allen's record. Uh, this past Ray game Allen. against the Bulls, I heard it was. Let me see here. Do do do. He did it in 585 fewer games, but he finally surpassed like the total, I guess, total three three pointers in the career. And he did it in almost 600 games mm-hmm. sooner than Ray Allen did. Um, so now he's working What's the on the percentage record, record. That I don't know. I didn't pull that those stats. That's the thing. Yeah, you gotta so look I at that because you we we <laughs> I'm pretty sure we can all agree that some of the shots that Curry threw up. We're like, why would you throw that? Oh, it went in. Never mind. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. that, that's about eighty percent of shooting right there. <laughs> yeah, he 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 has a weird. 
he has a weird aim, but it works for him. Like he's the only one who can pull off those shots. That's the thing. Like Ray Allen had like the perfect arch compared to a lot of other ones. He had the perfect arch, and like Ray, even Reggie Miller to an extent. I think Ray Allen had a better three point arch than Reggie, but that's just my personal opinion on that one. I think, uh, sure. I think I think Ray Ray's uh his his stroke was consistent. But yeah. Reggie yeah. Reggie's fadeaway three though, mm, I think it was probably the, the best fade of, of that three point arc. From the corners, sweet, sweet shooting. He was one of my go to drafts. Reg- Reggie as, like, and Larry's draft. curve. Larry's Larry's marking though. Like Whenever he threw it up, you, it was like a ninety percent chance it was going in. Like that was something that I was always like. I think Reggie kind of mimicked Larry to a degree on that one, and then just went from there. But yeah, well, there I, was a training video that uh, there was a coach who was trying to teach kids of how not to shoot the ball, and it was Larry Bird there. It's like, where's the <laughs> release point and how not to shoot? He's like, oh yeah, you shoot it like this, and it doesn't go in, and it goes in. Right. He's like, apparently, even if I wanted to miss, I can't. So Larry's a goat in, in shooting in general. He, if he wants to miss, he can't. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, I'm going to throw in an anime with this one since we're talking about three-point shooters. Wait. Minorima, Kuroko. I didn't say my point yet. <laughs> I, I, will, I, will, I, will just say, I had to throw Minorima in there real quick. Go ahead, okay. My bad, my bad. <laughs> Look the blasphemy. You are right, correct. So- you are correct. Right, so I agree to an extent, as I feel we all do, uh, with what Pippen said, as far as the game changing, you know, you went from a lot of team play to everybody wanted to be like Mike. However, Mm -hmm. one individual cannot ruin a game that multiple people play. How can you say... Because he changed the game, he ruined the basketball. First of all, if somebody wants to play basketball, they're going to play basketball. You see it all the time. People who shouldn't be playing basketball because they trash, but they still playing. So you can't <laughs> – how are you going to be oh, man, he ruined basketball? No. There's a reason why there are positions. And I like that you, you brought up, you know, how there was an era where people were playing two, three positions every game. Mm-hmm. That is positionless. But there's a reason why there's position. There is something that you do versus somebody else. If my point guard as is not about to get in the fucking middle of the damn rim and try to block shots, bro. I'm at the <laughs> center. <laughs> you feel me? Like, uh. So there's a reason that everybody loves the game. You can't have the way somebody plays the game change the way that you look at a game that you love. How does that make any sense? If I told you, you used to wrestle. If I told you, Panda, you know what? Wrestling is trash. Get that shit up. Get the fuck out of here. You going to stop wrestling because I said that shit? No, I'd probably just suplex you and be like, that's what I thought. (laughs) (laughs) Like, I'm just saying. However... I mean, basketball is just an amazing game. It's, it's just fundamental. I can see that. It's, it's, you well, and I think everything. And I think part of that, like Infamous has said earlier, I think, and Rod also, I think, alluded to it too, that Pippen is a bit jaded over his, you know, oh, his years of being under Michael's shadow. He is so, shady. yeah. The man is envious. The man is Boston Green. All right, no. but at the end of the day, Pippen nice. Yeah, oh, he's very, he's very good for what he does. Where the envy come from is like like Jason yeah. was saying. With no Michael, Pippen is the star of the Bulls. Oh, definitely. So when you supposed to be the star, and then somebody takes that spot from you, you, you know you gonna you gonna hate a little bit, or in his case, a lot of it. He wrote a book about. <laughs> I've, yeah. I've heard like um a lot of reviews about a book, and apparently, like sixty percent of the book is him throwing shade at Michael Jordan. Like, oh wow! Did. So, yeah, come on, my guy, just let it go. Let it go. 
Like, how many rings do you wear on your hand because you were on a team that actually right. played team ball? You know, like, right. there was nights where Mike got shut down, and where did the ball go to? Pippen, you. Right. Kerr, Ku Coach, yep. Harper, like, Ku Coach Rodman. is another one of those names that don't get mentioned often, too. I agree with you on that one. Ku Coach was the guy, too. He was. Yeah. Ku- I, I feel like... I feel like Ku Coach and Kerr was the start for the uh that was like the the start of oh man, Europeans are three point shooters. Oh yeah. Oh man, the white oh, boys yeah. shoot. Get the white boys. <laughs> yeah. Like that's what I feel like those two started that trend. Oh yeah, definitely. Most deaf, most deaf. However, I'm tired of this Michael Jordan LeBron conversation. Y'all gonna stop shitting on Kobe, bro. <laughs> I mean, Michael's the oh. GOAT regardless, but True. to continuously leave Kobe out of the conversation is ridiculous to me, bro. And then well, I don't think Kobe's ever no, left Kobe out of the conversation because he the Jordan. That's the first thing people say. It's crazy. Oh. I don't think you could leave Kobe out of the conversation only because even Michael said Kobe was a different animal. That's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. People Even Michael said, like, I, there's always that conversation that you, when you ask a basketball player, who's the greatest basketball player of all time? They want to say themselves. They right. want to. Right. But they know for a fact that yeah. if it was one-on-one certain situations, they're going to put three names up above them. Yeah. You know, so exactly. you're not going to have some point guard saying, oh, I'm better than Shaq. Shaq's gonna back you down, put you on your ass, and dunk on you. Right. You're gonna have easily take the rim with him. <laughs> but Kobe was just a different animal. Honestly, Jordan changed the game. Kobe's mm-hmm. in a different league, and LeBron is just a genetic freak of basketball. They're three different players. Legitly. Yeah. Legitly. You gotta throw Shaq in there because they don't give love to the league man being the greatest. Exactly. Oh, he That's was right. he was a monster for his time. A monster. He he yeah. he is what the monster stars should have been built after. Period. Like word <laughs> word. I'm jumping back in. I had to place a food order, but yeah, I gotta agree with that shit. Yeah, for Shaq. Yeah, Shaq was a game changer too. If only him and Penny would have stayed together, I would love to see the that Magic beat the Bulls interesting. and then a torch being oh, passed. Yeah, that that would have been awesome. Can't speak on that. You can't speak on that. <laughs> Hold on. I live in Orlando. Know, if, if we speak on that, <laughs> we're not going to get out here in an hour or two. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, yeah, I, I don't true. care about the time. You know me. But Our shows are only four hours. When Shaq left. Y'all going to make me miss my day. <laughs> <laughs> don't miss your day. Without that, I don't care what nobody say. The 95 Orlando Magic is one of my favorite Nasty. Teams. Mm. Nasty. Nasty. Bro, Nasty's not Any crazy. other year they would have won the title. Any other year. Or at least seeing them against Houston would have been awesome. That would have oh wait, they that did face each other. Never mind. And every time they win the playoffs, the year after they got swept in that my feeling. I feel mm-hmm. you. I feel you. Shoot, I was a Nick fan in that era. I, I, oof, no, I'm still I didn't know. Uh, the oh, Knicks man. had a, a good shot beating the Bulls too. And yeah, the dream team. Bomb mm-hmm. squad, baby. They, they, they had, they had all the right pieces. It's just they couldn't figure it out at the end. Okay. Yep, they just kept blowing it at the end. Like that was heartbreaking. <laughs> that was heartbreaking. Well, I, I, mean, I, I, I got since we're on basketball, I got a question for everybody. Shoot, uh, I you know want to know at least one to three of your favorite, most underrated NBA players. Underrated. Mm. Hmm. Underrated. Is this all time uh, or just like? Yeah, it can be all time. Okay. Hmm. Peja hmm. is one. Peja's a good pick. Stoyakovich was. He was nasty. Yep. Nasty. Yeah, come on, man. We talking about shooters? We just talk about shooters. No, we talking. Peja about No, I'm saying we were play. talking about shooters and like oh. Peja, bro. That's one. All right, let me think about other ones. 
You know what? I'm going to go really old school, and that's just because I used to like Dunkers back in the day. I'm going to say Daryl Dawkins, Chocolate Thunder. I'm going to say him. He don't get as much shine as he probably probably should. Mm. I mean, you bring a couple backboards, and that's what you're known for, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, he's very limited, but you know, like I liked him back in the day. But oh, I liked him when I was looking at old game. Underrated or overlooked players? I say it like that. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, so. Yeah, that's the one I'm just thinking off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. So, in my conversation with the greats, one of my favorite players get overlooked when they all talk about Kobe, LeBron, and Jordan. Thanks to McGrady. Oh, Dave. Okay, C Mac. Yeah. 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 Victim of timing and injuries, unfortunately. Well, yeah, I can read that. that but also look at day. the class of basketball players that he was with, though. Yeah. Like, that was like in prime with. time 2000 basketball right there. When T Mac was there. Yeah. Was, yeah. Yes. And he still was a beast to the point of the matter in an interview. Kobe himself said the only person he's scared to play against yeah. that gives him that yeah. little fear was Tracy McGrady. Yeah, I can see that. I don't, I don't think you can consider T-Mac underrated, bro. Overlook. 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 That's different. Yeah. Okay. I would, I would no, definitely I, I say overlook in the I, class I, I, of players he was with. Yeah. 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 His, if yeah. Who he was around, yeah, yeah, I can see him over being overlooked. Yeah. All right. Because I was like... Because you, cause you had I'm Vince sorry. Carter. You had yeah. uh, Allen Iverson around that same time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kobe. Kobe. Um, yeah, who else? Yeah, yeah. Richardson. You had a, you had a couple of, of, of prime time players around that same time. Carmelo Anthony was in that same class. Yep. Um, so yeah, yeah T Mac yeah. in his class, T Mac was definitely overlooked. For sure. For sure. For sure. Good one. Mm. Well, one of my favorite point guards. White chocolate, aka Jason Williams. Oh, oh, he was. Oh, he's definitely overlooked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> those who know, oh, know. Yeah. That's no, definitely those who know, know. I'm like, I'm like, every time you name someone, I'm like, bro, these are not underrated players, but I, I keep forgetting overlooked. I don't know why I overlooked. switched to overlooked. Right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. overlooked. Right. Um, and I, I give my last one to one of my favorite six men, Jamal Crawford. Very old. Oh, he was nasty. Today. He was nasty. Was. I was talking about. Was. He's nasty. He's nasty. He was nasty. He still is. Oh, still. So wait, he's still playing? <laughs> he's not in the league. He's playing another league. He's not in the NBA. But I mean, oh. if they want to pick, if somebody wanted Jamal Crawford, they can pick him up, and he'll still get 20 points off the bench. Oh, easily. Easily. Yeah. If we think of overlooked. That's really it, it, it's like you got to know the player to know. That's the thing. I would say yeah. someone overlooked. We were talking about Ray Allen earlier. What about when he was running with Ray Allen's running with like Glenn Robinson and Sam Cassell? Both of them kind of got overlooked, but because of Ray, if you want to think yeah. about it, Glenn they Robinson both... looked a beast too. Mm-hmm. Glenn Robinson, I discovered them like only reason I like playing with. Um, I got into the Bucks was playing M- NBA Live, and I. Yeah, yeah, it was live. And I picked the Bucks on accident. I meant to pick the six. I ended up playing the Bucks. And I was like, whoa, this team's kind of nasty if you know what you're doing. If you know what Baron you're doing. Davis was over, I think, is an overlooked player, too. Baron Davis used to do oh, some shit. Bro. Yeah. Oh, oh, my God. Oh. Yeah. yeah. He was good. He was yeah. good for us. I got Maybe. a name. I got a name. Bring back memory. Sip. Special to you on Orlando Magic people. Hito Turkey. Turkey glue. Turkey. Wow. Good point. Good point. He's over. I'm not a magic. Two K. He was one of my cheat code, bro. <laughs> oh yeah, he's definitely a cheat code. <laughs> he was one of cheat code. They sleep on. Very much. One of one of my uh, one of my choices for overlooked players because just the the way you could utilize him in three different you could literally utilize this guy three different ways. Um. More of a new style player, uh, JJ JJ Redick. Oh, really? uh, Redick. Yeah. yeah, I think he's overlooked. I think he could have been part of a superstar team if they utilized his abilities better. Yeah, his properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause yeah cause he was a good shooter. He was a very good shooter, but he just he just never got his shine. He was a good shooter in college. He just never got to the right team to display his skills. Unfortunately. Like he was nasty in Orlando, but he had nobody around. That's some sad. He do with the seventy sixes. True. Yeah. Yeah. The only one that I can think of really 
I'm actually gonna have to go with Mark Jackson. Mark Jackson. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I can see that. Like his ability to command the team was like that was like that Reggie era where they really didn't pay attention to him because it was like it was like Kuroko. If the ball got to him, it got where he needed to go. You know what I mean? Right. And that was it. The points was made. So yeah. Maybe someone else overlooked. Maybe it's because of the error he played in also. I, I can't believe I'm actually about to say this, but Dominique Wilkins. I can't believe I'm about to actually throw Dominique Wilkins into okay. this conversation. Wilkins? I don't know if he was overlooked, though. But right. it's like he was probably not overlooked, but it's like he just – he was around, and if you were around in that era, you knew who he was, if that yeah. makes sense. Okay, like, oh, yeah, okay. Dom- yeah, like, oh, yeah, he I, was around. I'll put him in the same category as one of my favorite prop fours, and that's Sean Kemp. Sean Kemp? Yeah. 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 Oh, no, I feel like they get that. Over the years, they become overlooked. You can make, if you want to make yeah. that argument. They get forgotten about. Well, I mean, but time forgets everybody. Yeah. Right. So, was, you know, oh, yeah. time, time is a different situation. Kemp and Wilkins, but we're talking about, like, within know. their within their like, eras, though, that's a little bit different. Yeah, hmm. the air is yeah, everybody knew. <laughs> so. Right. All right. So, because I don't want to, because I don't want to keep us stuck on this one for too long, I want to switch gears really quickly. Um, still staying in sports though, while we're while we're in this this vein, and I want to give a mm-hmm. complete shout out to Miss Erin Jackson. Uh, she's the first Black woman to win the World Cup for speed skating. She recently just did that. So, you okay. know what I'm saying? The fact that she, she got there. The thing was, and this is the funny part I read. I was kind of reading through. I was like, okay, just trying to see what, okay, how who was she beating this and the other? She took the last competition off, the last world championship off. They said that everybody who won that competition, she beat this time around. So the only reason they placed last time <laughs> was because she was sick. Oh, wow. Right. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, okay. So we just we just being beasts for no reason now. That's that's what we're doing. Okay. Oh, wow. Weird. She pulled a Venus. I mean, she pulled a Serena. Damn. She pulled a straight Serena. She's twenty nine from Ocala, Florida. So she yo yo neck of the woods, bro. Yeah. Florida so is a place. It is. It, it is. A she place. pulled a she pulled a straight up Serena. <laughs> you know what? Uh huh. Tip tip of the hat to her. Everybody cares. How that's one of that? those moments where you want to, where <laughs> that's one of those moments where it's like, let me show you how great I am. I'm right. Gonna out there I'm going to show you how great I am. Exactly. <laughs> that's what that is exactly it. Exactly it. Uh-uh. Um. All right. So I think we did good. Let's, let's get into, let's get into our, our, our anime bag for a second. Oh, speaking this of is- which, we were talking about sports. It's high Q today. Hi Q is the shirt oh, of the day. What's that's, yeah. what's that's what's up. That's what's up. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna let what's y'all up? choose. I wish I knew how to pull my shirts on. Well, oh, you know, know, know how he always does. Like, you don't know. I gotta get anime shirts. I, I do not know where to find like anime shirts for big guys. I don't know where you find them at. Hey, what size you need, shirt? I'm probably like a three X, four X, probably. We we gonna link. Up. I'm gonna show you why we get miles from. All right, there you go. Big ass motherfucker. Vocab ain't helping us out. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, I got a My Hero Academia one, but it's like super old. It's like season two, one might, so I can't can't be rocking that anymore. Can't be rocking it. <laughs> Ooh, you you like three seasons behind, bro. We're gonna have to, yeah. We're gonna have to yeah, work on like that I one. said, I caught it. I said it was my size and it was on Amazon, so just grabbed it. I hear that. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. All right, so I'm gonna give y'all the choice. We can go live action movies or. Mm-hmm. We can go seven deadly sins, and I will let y'all choose which which direction y'all want to go. I think I want to do a live action movie. Wait, 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 I think we do live action before, first. That's that movie. Before, before we'll get real. Be, before I, I choose, I need to know. We talk about animated live action. No, we're talking about it's live action. Okay. We're just talking about the live action adaptations from Netflix. Of course, we'll be talking about the anime that they're related to, but mm-hmm. so we're talking about the ones from Netflix. We're talking about um, <clears throat> evolution. No, 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 no. That's not Netflix. Netflix. That, that went right count. Now. 
That never yeah, happened. Yeah, Netflix right now. Live it never happened. What movie it never was happened. that? Huh? Say what? What? What movie what was, was that? Well, that looked like Evolution. Now that shall not be. Dra- that show, <laughs> Dragon Ball Evolution. <laughs> yeah. that, no. that, that was. Wait, they made that into a movie. You didn't see it, right? Exactly, no, exactly. What? what? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, uh, yeah, was it Loop on the Third? Was it Case Club? No, Pokemon that, kind of would be live action. Like, is that the new though. Pokemon movie that's coming out? Pokemon I Evolution? Think so. oh, I, think I think so. so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. That, that's all about right. Pokemon, Pokemon Evolution live action. That's all kind of hype. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's all kind of hype. <laughs> yeah, because it never happened. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, all right. I've never heard of that one. As long as that one in conversation. No, 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 we're not gonna go there. We're not gonna go there. So, all right, well, I guess we'll do live action then. We'll do live action because that'll be the the shorter of the two conversations starting yes, it off. Most definitely, I took notes oh, yeah. for the for the other one. So, <laughs> so here's how we are gonna start oh, this. Yes. One Piece, it's the live true. action that they're supposed to be coming out with here in the next. They say I'm assuming sometime next year. They have, don't have a release date yet for it. Um, no, these are the characters. That they've got so far. So we have Luffy. No. We have Sanji. Okay. We have Usopp. Yes. <laughs> we have Nami. And Zoro. Now, so excuse me. Sorry about this. So far, from what I've noticed, everyone is relatively, all the actors are relatively close to the birth nations as stated by Goda. By Oda. G Oda. I call him Goda. Because <laughs> he's the goat, right. so <laughs> God Oda, you know what I'm saying. But right. he is he, every so far, everyone's pretty much been relatively close to the actual. If he, if they were for real life, what he says, where they would be from. Um. However, what I want to talk about is Netflix' most recent history of live action movies. For example, the Bleach movie. That they did recently. Oh God! Um, the Ruani Kenshin movie that they did that. recently. That looked fire. That was fire. I, I'm was not gonna fire. lie, I enjoyed that one. Yeah, okay. Okay. Was, what do you I, all I feel like think? That's the best one that they've done so far. The yeah. Ruani Kenshin. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Okay. Okay. So, do you all feel? Let's let's start from there. Do you all feel that Netflix live action adaptations? Have gotten better over time, or do you think this is just going to be another stock wannabe of a of an action adaptation? Uh, personally, personally, I think that the studios actually have gotten better over time. Okay, um, and the directors. And people who are actually directing the film, they've gotten better with listening and following what the an- the anime originated with. Uh, we've seen that with uh, Rurouni Kenshin. Uh, we've even seen that with um, Full Metal Alchemist, the live action film. Um, FMA, okay. That was actually pretty decently yeah, uh, done. So it wasn't like I wouldn't say it was like top tier, but Thanks. it at least followed the story of the anime that we all know and love. Same with Attack on Titan. It's kind of hard to do that with, you know, not using CGI, but uh-huh. they did pretty decent with the action portion, but straight away from the story kind of. So as long as they stay true to the story, it's the same with comic book movies. If they stay true to the story, it's going to be a hit. If they want to go their own direction and do their own thing, like we've seen in most DC movies, um, <laughs> you'll uh, you'll see it won't, it's a hit and miss. So I think I think Netflix is getting better with this. I think this movie is going to be great. The the actor choices that they made. Um, most people are like, no, no way, but there's probably things behind the scenes that we haven't seen uh, yet, like their screen test right. that probably went amazing, and we just don't know about it yet. So I think I think this one's going to hit pretty good. Okay. Okay. So. Mm. Anybody else want to weigh in on there? I'll go if anybody else doesn't want to go. Go ahead. I haven't watched, but a few... 
uh, live action because of the one that should not be spoken put me off of live action. I can respect that. The one I did watch Parasite. I did watch okay. Parasite. Parasite was really good. Um, I did watch um Full Metal Alchemist. It's not what I wanted, but it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. Like, it's watchable. I'll say it like that. It's not felt about. It's um, watchable. Yeah. Right. But it, it's two live action adaptations, even though one's not anime, but we consider it anime. That just messed it up, and that's Dragon Ball and the Avatar. Mm. They yeah. try to do their own thing. They like I want if you're gonna do a live action adaptation of something, you gotta. I basically you gotta do what Marvel did. You gotta stick to the stick to the book and not put too much of yourself into it. Even though the MCU is, you know, the Russo brothers, um, they their view on the MCU, but everything is connected to the comics. Everything makes sense with the mm. comics. So if you're gonna do that with So anime, I'm gonna blow my whistle and throw my flag on that play right there, fam. Go ahead. I'm blowing my whistle and throwing my flag I'm on that play. To the team. No way, it's not even close to the T, bro. It's not even close to the T. Like, they've been no, messing up. No, no, no. I'm not saying exactly. Okay. I'm not saying exactly. I'll let you finish I'm your saying, piece. Like, they, they straight the line. They straight the line of the comics. Okay, put it like this. MCU, when they, they, we know the MCU is its own entity away true. from the comic book. True, But they true. drew from comics. Okay, okay. Okay, the Avatar movie. Stop they talking books. about these things that didn't happen. I'm sorry, I got a bigger point. <laughs> I'm sorry. But the Avatar movie, they they had the books and had a already animated mm-hmm. series to draw from and did something completely disgusting. And not in the guilt. Mm. Like I couldn't I didn't go past you have the show where you hear the main character name. You ch- why did you change his name in the last action adaptation? Yeah, mm, that's true. Yeah. So it's like it's like I don't want them to get to the point where they do stuff like that, trying to make it their own or trying to revamp it for the younger audience or a new audience. Because yeah. what's gonna happen is your core audience. Are gonna bully you like you did the people who made Sonic. <laughs> Thank God, I was we're, one of them. I was one of them. We're, we're gonna bully you until you fix it, or you just gonna get thrown away like the other two movies that should not book in us. Oh, you talking about the movie with the tall creatures? That's what yeah. you're the Avatar. Yeah. <laughs> the tall no. blue creatures. No, no, no. Other Avatar. <laughs> okay, my bad. That was a the other movie. one. I so, don't know about that one. <laughs> now Sanji's but, Sanji's voice, uh, Eric Vale, the English voice actor for Sanji, he actually is kind of along that same vein as where you are right now, uh, Infamous, where he said, and he actually told them, he's like, you guys have a thousand episodes to watch before you can get this job right. He literally told them that in an interview, he said. And wow. to a degree, like it was shade, but it wasn't. Because like Infamous was just saying, nice, you have a thousand episodes animated not to mention that much manga of resource to go through to know how these characters are supposed to develop when they're supposed to develop and what that you know saying what that's supposed to look like and if you don't take advantage of that shame on you and i I think honestly i I think that's where he was coming from more so i can see that i can see that I could definitely see that. He makes an excellent point with especially with One Piece in, in particular. That mm-hmm. one you have source material, you have the anime, you have the manga. Um, Panda, we were talking about this earlier with Baku Man. Like, yeah, you have yep, because I remember this is a slight spoiler, but one of the main heroines, um, she had the voice um voice edition for uh, um a role towards the end of the show. Yep. And everybody had a script. The script had an error in it that nobody picked up on. She never read the script. She read the manga, and that's how she got the part. So, right. just just an example to throw out there. But also to talk about what we were just talking about with like the Netflix adaptations. Um, like I said, I've only seen Full Metal. I watched a little bit of it. It was fine. I just didn't. It was just too jarring for me. Mm-hmm. I'm not a Bleach person, so I kind of I didn't watch Bleach. Um, <laughs> I did. <laughs> I did watch the Death Note one, which I don't know. Lakeith Sanford did an excellent acting job, but 
if it, it sounded like they, they went too wrong in the wrong direction, honestly, if they would have made it a B horror movie, it would have been fine. It would have been perfectly fine, but that's just my opinion on that matter. But I think the one, I think the One Piece live action is going to surprise a lot of people, honestly, because I think there's some people who, and I think I, I think I have a feeling who Netflix is aiming this at, honestly, because there's people, and we probably know people in our circles that they refuse to watch anything animated, they refuse to watch anything manga, they won't read a manga, but they'll watch anything live action. Look at the MCU. We were just talking about MCU just a few mm-hmm. moments ago. There's probably a lot more people who know about Marvel and MCU properties because of the movies more than like we grew up with the um with the X-Men animated cartoon which is coming back. We had Spider-Man. We we'll had, talk about that too, yeah. Yeah. I'm just you know throwing a sneak yeah, peek yeah. out there. But you know, we had our cartoons, we had the Ninja Turtles, we had you know we I think we mentioned Street Sharks and Bike Mike Ma- and Biker Mike and Mars last week. <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah. So I mean, we grew up with we our our generation, our era, we had we had the cartoons. We had but the I think best era. But I think nowadays I think more people are inclined to watch live action stuff. And Nothing, nothing wrong with that. Don't get me wrong, but I think most people gravitate. They'll, they'll take a live action more serious than animated. Honestly, and I can respect that. I can respect that. I think my thing though, and and this is more so. The credit to the writers need of the original source material needs to be given, and I know they yeah they put it in the credits and this that and the other, but the storylines that these writers and comic book creators. And you know what I'm saying? These mangaka have created. They're epic in their own right. That's why they have the following that they have. That's why these people are even thinking about starting a movie or a live action regarding it. So why? What what makes you think that the regular public would not fall in love with that same thing that these millions of people who have we were talking about age last time. You know what I'm saying? I'm 35. 36, about to be 37. See, I'm so old, I'm forgetting my age. You see what I'm saying? Like, we've been doing this since I was, we were kids, you know? And and mm-hmm. constantly staying up on it and trying to make sure we keep up with things. And the amount of dedication that that takes, what makes you think that these new kids wouldn't still get that same dedication if you live actioned what was already written? Like, I, I think it's the creative license is great, I think. But I don't think 90% of these things need that large of amount of creative license to be done. You know what I'm saying? To be provided. Um, Like, okay, so I saw Bleach, the live-action Bleach, and I'm a Bleach fan. Love it. Now, I haven't read the manga, but I know as far as the anime goes, I've read, watched everything for the anime up until they stopped. Which hurt my feelings, but whatever. Can't wait for the thousand-year arc to come out. That's going to be great. But when they did with the way that they did the the live action up to the fisherman portion, which is like the first, basically first arc ish of Bleach, how he got his powers, I think they did an actually decent job. Now, don't get me wrong. There's another part of this conversation that I feel needs to be had at some point, and that is we see the quality of movies that come out. We've all seen Pacific Rim. We've all seen Godzilla. We know the quality of special effects that are available to us as people. You know what I'm saying? Now, that studio may not have it. I get that. But think about it. If you take the anime world or the comic world and actually used the technology that we have at our fingertips, there is no reason we should not be able to see a Gear 4 Luffy. None. Listen. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, okay. There's no reason a Bankai should not exist. Like the Aaron Carr, for you know what I'm saying? The Espada, there's no reason that if the Espada came on with all their glory, that we shouldn't have a problem seeing them and mass massacring people. When they pull Zoro in here and he goes to do uh when he does Ashura. If they do, they won't get that far with this one. I know because they only added up to Sanji on the crew, on up to Nami on the crew. So we all know she was pretty much the last one before Chopper. Yeah. So that right. means we're only going up through Arlong Park more than likely with this one. They can only go up to Arlong Park before adding anybody else, any other characters to, you know what I mean, to the roster. Um, mm-hmm. 
which that still gives us what two, three arcs, if I'm not mistaken. Three arcs. Yeah, about three arcs. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, not bad. So they got they yeah, have three, plenty three. of source material. Plenty of source material. Um I hope that the person who is doing Sanji, for example, like uh Vale Eric Vale has said, you know, there's a thousand episodes of this. I hope he's watched where German 66 came into play. You know what I'm saying? Because that's how Sanji became Sanji. You know what I'm, you know, you know, yeah. the whole up until the whole red legged pay leg Zeph or red leg Zeph, you know, the whole how he came to get with Zeph in the first place. If you don't know that motivation for your character, if you haven't watched it and seen that emotional journey for that character, I don't think you can really know how to portray him. You better know how to cook too, shit. <laughs> they can fake that. <laughs> I didn't think about that. But that's a good point. People order carry out every day. I'm just saying. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. That's a good point. He's laughing because he always chasing down shorty. He is always chasing down skirts. Man, True. Fuck, uh, played up. Okay. So yeah, yeah. Look, this, this, this is my viewpoint on on this live action. They need to understand that for a lot of people, uh. One Piece is their goat. It's my goat. Yeah. So, yeah, you fuck it up, because I will come to you. <laughs> we there are going to be a lot. There will be a lot. There's of a lot of pressure. Criticism. Okay. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. definitely. A lot of pressure. Yeah. Like, now I want to throw another one at you. <laughs> you feel me? It's it's something like you know how much anime there is out, and and motherfuckers have this one anime as their greatest of all time. You got a lot of pressure, my guy. <laughs> Not just that, but they're also, you know, they're also doing Cowboy Bebop. Now, that's a whole other conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I'm looking forward to. That one, that right. one I'm not sure about, but I've never watched Cow- <laughs> I've never watched Bebop, you know, so I I'm don't know. I'm looking forward to that one. I hope so. that's... I, 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 because of the way that Cowboy Bebop, the, the anime was, I feel like if they take it seriously, they can do amazing things. Amazing. So... I feel like when it comes to the animated movies versus the animated series or anime series, Mm -hmm. when they do the anime movies, um, you brought up Death Note earlier. Death Note could have been good if they didn't rush it. I felt like it was too rushed. Yeah. Yeah. I I would agree. Bleach. Bleach was rushed. They could have built built that up a little bit better. Um. I think being Cowboy Bebop is going to be made into a series instead of a movie. Cowboy Bebop is probably going to be one of the best live action um, shows that we have to date. And I think that I agree. You know what? I never thought about that, but I think that that's probably where they're messing up at. They're making these movies out of things that are series. Right. If they made them into series, even if they extended out the series, you know, I think that that would make it that much cleaner because like he said, with bleach, they did push, put everything up to grand Fisher, which was like 30 episodes or more in one movie. Oh, that's bad. That's just been at least two movies probably. Right. 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 So I was disappointed with bleach. You, you know, that, that's something that can be, that can be, Ronnie Kenshin, same thing. They put an entire series into two movies. Like the fact that and they did Rurouni Kenshin in three movies probably saved the movie. Not was it three? Else. I yep. thought it was just the two. No, it's three. It's one? three. It's three. Okay, okay. Yeah. Then I missed one. They put it in three, they it saved it. Okay. Um, they should think about doing that for uh or One Piece, they should make it like a like almost a, a six arc type of movie right, where you're yeah. developing your characters. You get a backstory on Sanji, a backstory on Usopp, backstory on yep. um, Nani. Pretty much, you get a backstory on everybody up until you move up into your your actual adventure. Once you go into your actual adventure, that leaves the door open for a One Piece series live action and you could do right. more with something like that where you don't have to rush everything into one movie. Um, it's just yeah. something that they should think about when it comes to live action animes where yeah, do the movie. It's great, but don't give me 
don't give me, oh, I'm Luffy and here's how it starts and the end of the movie you're fighting Dolph Flamingo. Don't do right. it. Right. Right. Yeah, I'm but, I'm hoping I'm just hoping they don't hit our line in this that. first arc. I just had, I just part. thought of something else. I have another point. It probably depends on the animes they've been doing too. We we talk One Piece, Dragon okay. Ball. I think the Pokemon live action one with Ryan Reynolds, that was not bad. That was pretty good, but that was his own Ooh. original entity, if you think about it. Detective but, Pikachu was a game itself, though. That's the thing. Like, true. It was already a spinoff game. It, yeah, it was a spinoff of a spinoff, made, but they took their own creative so liberties good. with them. Yeah. yeah. But they took, their, they took their own creative liberties with the Detective Pikachu IP. I'm it thinking this if you want to do so one-shot good. anime movies, it can be done. It just depends on what franchises you use. Because as we're talking, I'm thinking, okay, what anime, what manga shows could be good as like a one-shot anime movie. Any come sports to mind. anime? Oh yeah, yep. definitely. Haikyu would, would be amazing. That would be a movie. That would be a great one. It would be. <laughs> Prince of Tennis would probably be a very good Prince movie depending on how you cut it. Yeah. I, I wasn't even thinking sports anime. That's not the first thing that popped in my head, but I I can see why you're going. It's probably on. the easiest too to to one shot because you playing you playing a sport. Mm-hmm. I'm not thinking one friend just without surprise hasn't done a live action or hasn't even thought about it. I'm, I I feel like I always bring this up every podcast episode, but case closed. I'm surprised they haven't done a live action case closed yet. I'm kind of surprised they haven't done that yet. I could have swore they tried. Maybe they did. Too. I don't know. I don't know. Like I'm just spitballing him. Tra- Maybe I they didn't. I don't know. Let me look it up. Let me look it up. The I other one like I was thinking, other one I was thinking was Lupin the Third. I mean, they did a CGI Lupin, which I still have to see. But Lupin the Third would probably be good as a one shot because they've done Lupin the Third movies in the past. So it's not like out, it's out in the realm of possibility they could do a live action Lupin the Third. They did one over in Japan. A lot of a lot of the yeah. animes that that's what I'm figuring made, as much. Maybe they, they definitely did bring... one in Japan. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. Maybe they did in the Japanese market. They never released it internationally. Yeah, because I'm looking at it right now. Looks pretty decent, though. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know when it came out. Like, I don't know, I'll, I'll probably look it up after this show. But no, those are just two off the top of my head. Like, because you can do like a whole case closed movie, and it's just one case. You could do right. Lupin and um mm-hmm. setting up for one heist. You can even do it maybe Ocean's Eleven style or something like that. I don't know. I mean, yeah, and so- then. And then mm. Netflix already has done the Black Lupin series, which which is very good. And I know it pissed that off was a lot very of people. Well done. It pissed off a lot of people. They thought it was going to be Lupin the Third, but I don't think people yeah. were paying attention to the title. I think that, and probably you know, because he was a black guy doing Lupin stuff. I don't know. Just a just a cause game was, theory it there. Was done well though, so it was, was, very, it was very, very well done. Yeah. yeah so. Like it stuck to it did like we were talking about sticking to the source material. That mm-hmm. guy in the live action Lupin, he just committed that he just did his own version of the crimes that were in the books. Right. We were just talking about that earlier. Yeah. That that would make that good. I'm like I'm I'm looking forward to when that comes back out. That was a very well done adaptation of a book franchise. We were talking about that. Even I know we mentioned Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball I don't think works live action. Certain animes just don't work live action. Like okay. that's why. I can, that's why I couldn't watch Full Metal. It was just too jarring. Like it, I can see, I see the potential, but because of how that show is, I don't think it's gonna look good. Good to me, because it could be an aesthetic thing for me. I'm not. If people like it, fine, that's cool. Go watch the anime. Even people who didn't like oh, the I Death Note live action, I say go watch the anime. Go read the manga. Way so better. I've got a question then, and I'll, I'll raise this to everybody. Is the conversation then? that the adaptations are not good or should be better because they're animated and you know manga or comic based or is this a conversation that's deeper setting people are not using source material for example books to movie adaptations if you think about it harry potter was one of the largest selling movie series out however the book series Reads nothing like the movies play at all. Oh, I didn't know that. That's bad. Yeah, like that there's a there. It follows the main course, but I actually I was I was doing some research because originally I hadn't read the book series, right? So I was like, well, let me read as a writer. I wanted to kind of read somebody's style who had made it, and I wanted to see what they put in their book that translated 
to that specific fighting scene in the movie. And so, especially for like magical battles and things like that, just so I can get an idea. And as I'm reading the magical battle in the book, the scene that I'm thinking about, if you all have watched Harry Potter, I forget which movie it is. It's when he's in the, the library finding the orb and they get that magical battle between uh, Harry and his friends and um, I forget, what's her name? The crazy chick. Uh, with the with the hair, I forget her name. The girl with the hair. The girl with the hair, right? Um, but it was like his minions, the the other guy's minions, and they were fighting back and forth, back and forth, and then they get to the door at the end, and it's like, then you have the Dumbledore fighting against, I don't know, the Grim Reaper guy. I I'm horrible with his names. I'm horrible with names. Voldemort. Voldemort, there we go. When they were fighting and they had the electric, you know what I'm saying, the battle, he was turning it into glass. He threw That's sand at you know what I'm saying? Threw glass, turned it into sand. That whole fight was great, I thought. But and then I read the book and it was nothing like, nothing like what the movie showed. Well, <clears throat> here's the thing about reading the books versus watching the movies. And I'm glad you made uh, that point because... I didn't watch the Lord of the Ring movies until I read the books. Mm-hmm. Okay. The, the two towers battle was supposed to, in my, in my mind when I when I envisioned Legolas doing all the crazy shit he was doing. <laughs> I'm thinking more than just a, a shield slide down the steps. Right. Uh, I'm seeing countless <laughs> hordes around them, Gimli and Legolas counting out loud. Boom, boom. They did it, but you had actors that were playing orcs doing your normal acting thing where I'm waiting to get killed. I'm waiting to get killed. I'm dead. So it wasn't like fast paced like the the book read. Mm -hmm. Um, Your imagination is much stronger and it's one point of view than any movie will ever show. And then once you see that movie, that part of your imagination that you thought of that scene in your head, it's gone. It. Yep, because now it's 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 been brought to light. So when you read something and then they translate and then someone else's vision is translated on the silver screen, that's what you're seeing. You're not seeing your own adaptation. So oh, that's a good point. Book, books and books to movies. It's it's very hard to have that discussion because again, mm-hmm. you're seeing your vision first while you're reading before it's on the silver screen. Right, and I completely agree. I, I really rock with that. that. I was amazed with that one, and I think that that's something. As one of those, as Vocab always throws up the message points of our shows. That's one of them. Anybody's listening again? Message. Read. Message. Reading is fundamental as well. We grew up with reading is fundamental. That phrase, and it's because it allows your imagination to grow. It allows you to use your own mind's eye to see things in a in a way that only you can perceive them. And that's what gives you that growth potential on the day-to-day basis for you to use in any situation that goes throughout your life. Every time you come across something, it's your imagination. It's your ability to self-think that gets you through those situations. And if you continue to allow images to be placed and implanted into your head, guess what? You're only going to be able to think in those very specific depicted manners. So get out there. Read something. I don't care if it's a, a manga. I don't care if it's a comic book. I don't care if it's a book. It could be 13 pages. It could be two pages. I don't care. Read something that allows you to formulate an idea and an opinion on your own. And then once you've seen it with book, your own mind's book, eye and you want to <laughs> read a book, read a book, right? <laughs> the old the old cartoon commercial. <laughs> but like, and after that, that you want to go watch that, that movie? Was a little job I, I, right, I know. That's what I said. And then go read, go watch the movie after that. When one I of the said, books that I, them. one of the books that I tell people to read and ignore the movie, even though it was it was nice to actually get a visual depiction of one of the characters, mm-hmm. is the Aragon and Eldest books. Um, okay. When you read that book, uh, your imagine. I I was teleported into a different world reading that book. And then reading the third uh, portion as well. And then when I saw Bro. the movie, the only satisfaction that I got was actually seeing a 
version of Safira that, oh man, that's what Safira would look like to me as a dragon. Okay. Right. The rest of the movie, the acting, everything is just not not for me. The only thing right. that I was yeah. happy about was Jeremy Irons was in it. Other than that, it was not for me. Respect it. Now for me. <laughs> I can respect now that we're it. Talking about books in the movies. It's a general book that I would love for them to put into a movie. I feel like it would be so easy. And if y'all remember the school, y'all remember the Magic Tree House? Yes. If they was to put them in a movie more, I think that would be awesome. I could see that. Okay. I could. So I I just my little my little niece, um, she stays in Virginia, my brother. She calls me. Like when they, my brother just had a kid this year, and so she had called me, congrats for a little bit, and I asked what she doing. Oh, appreciate you, new no, uncle. But um, I asked what she doing or whatever, and so she like she reading. I'm like, well, why don't you read out loud to me? So I just do it to give her to read. Right. And so she like read, and I'm like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna find some books that I used to read because she's eight, and she loves to read, and she don't read very well. Oh yeah, eight. And I'm I'm gonna give books for you. And I get on Amazon and I type in Magic Tree House. They have the whole book set for like 80 bucks. Nice. I'm like, yeah, this is your Christmas. Oh, wow. That's nice. And just so you know, if, if a couple of them books go missing because I didn't finish the three. <laughs> 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 so I'll get them to you next week. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> we can share. We can share. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I think book clubs, that's something like that. people used to do. Book clubs are, are a thing that should be brought back. Uh, you know, people right. reading books and they getting together to talk about it and stuff like that. It's that. yeah, an under underrated activity. I I'll put it that way. Right. Remember like some they reading still program? Exist, but like you remember, like back in our day, like you would go to the library to chill, like you know, yeah. and just be people in it, have conversations and talk and read and just <sighs> now. You go to a library. <laughs> right. You, you had to get you your go to a library and it's literally like, okay, I needed this book for school or something. And then that's it. And you gone. Yeah. You know, True. and there's no nobody be in the library no more. It was a magical thing when you got your library card. Go to the library oh, yeah. by yourself. I think yeah. I was like kids that they know what those look like. Yeah. <laughs> Especially growing up in New York, the New York City Library is worth exactly. an exactly. underrated, exactly. Uh, underrated resource. Especially if you're looking for anime and manga, they were a low key <laughs> underrated source to when you were looking for stuff. Bro, what? I don't know if you all had it. We had a uh, summer reading program where you would get like free pizzas for reading books and stuff <laughs> over the summer. Man. <laughs> I ain't never got no pizza for reading. Oh, uh, yeah. We used I to did. get free pizzas for points. So we you get did. points and stuff. You can get toys. It was like going to Chuck E. Cheese. Pizza or, you know. Yeah. Uh, free pizza hut. Uh, yeah. Accelerator yeah. reader. What the yep. fuck, bro? Well, <laughs> nowadays, <laughs> nowadays, libraries, uh, certain towns, libraries will uh, acknowledge uh, watching um something that you have to read as reading. Me and my daughter watched really? at least really a hundred hours worth of anime together and the libraries counted it. Wow. This was they wow. gave her tickets, That's she put in and yeah, she she won like this uh gift certificate to um to some store that was in our local area. But yeah, I mean they they count a lot of things. As long as you're being interactive and you talk about yeah. it and you have right. a short paragraph at it, they'll they uh, count it. Oh, oh wow, that's what's up. Cool. Okay, yeah. That's pretty that's cool. Nice. I mean, well, cool. in, in this day and age, I think like audiobooks and stuff like that, that makes sense. You know, because oh. a lot of people don't have the time to sit in, in one spot because of the way things are these days. So that's actually that's real cool. And so libraries, if y'all if y'all don't know about that, make sure that y'all start doing that so these kids can start get, learning from what they watch. Because what's one thing that we always say. On every episode, no matter which one we do, you if you're gonna do something, learn from it, no matter what it is. That's learn that's something true. from everything you do. If it's watching anime, if it's listening to us, it don't matter. Learn. Mm-hmm. You should get something out of it. Yeah, so how to cook is we every every experience is, is a learning one. There you go. Mm-hmm. There you go. All right. Well, I think I think we we did a decent little piece on on the live action, so let's switch gears a little bit. And I'm actually just gonna this is just an update 
piece. Um, I think Rod is actually who brought this one to me. Uh, Twitch is now on the Switch. So this is kind of what yeah, it looks Rob, like. Rob brought it up, yeah. Yeah, this is what yep. it looks like. Excuse me. Now, you cannot, uh, you cannot use the chat function so far, and you cannot stream from it as of right now. Mm. The chat function, there's a QR code, I guess, that you have that you can use the chat function on your phone. However, uh, you can't see it on screen, and as of right now, you are not allowed to stream through it. But from what I've heard and what the reviews that I've seen, uh, the picture is the picture of it isn't bad. So okay. just as a heads up for those of you who have switches and you want to watch Twitch, you can, you can't interact with it. You have to get it on your phone for the, the chat box part, but that is uh, just something, something as a quick heads up. So I wanted to let you all know about that. Um, yeah, man, it's a good idea. It's a good idea. Hopefully they do let you stream. Cause that's like, that's cause you can stream be on great. Cause you can stream from the PS4. If I'm not mistaken, maybe PS5. If uh-huh. I'm not mistaken, you can. Okay. You can. Like I, yeah, Nintendo you can probably get that. Every other That's... platform. You can stream for Xbox too. Don't, don't just yep. not leave. Don't just leave Xbox. I said like every that. other platform. I didn't do you like that. <laughs> no, <laughs> Even though it's so like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. there's gonna be a lot of. I could. I wouldn't be surprised if, if Nintendo would let people um, stream from Twitch. There probably be a lot of. I think people who stream either Animal Crossing or Pokemon Unite. I think we see a lot more streamers for those two games. There's actually a lot of streamers for Pokemon United right now um, that are out there. I know you mentioned earlier about trying to get a group together, and I'm I'm definitely down for that. And we can always uh, stream that gameplay at some point. I'm a yeah. I'll do all rounder and attacker. So I, I'll I'm supporting defense. Spots. I'm supporting defense. I've, okay. I've loved playing. I've noticed I've loved playing defense and support. I like support more. This is like because a lot of people against. don't play. A lot of people don't play support. And I, from what I've noticed, and I'm like, so, wow, nobody plays support. I'm like, wow. I'm, I'm it's, a easy, it's, an easy, it's an easy transition from defense to support. Very easy transition, too. Uh, so I'm going to let know that now. Come Christmas, I will begin to switch. Bet. I will begin Just let us know. Let us know. I miss my Pokemon. It's, it's a 5v5 uh, team, right? Say the word, guys. Yeah. Yes, yes, five, uh, yeah, five, yeah. J Star, yeah, we five, gotta get your, five, your five, info, bro, bro, before we get done. Right. Bro, bro. See, I don't got one, so you ain't gotta worry That's... about me. You take my spot. You gotta get one, <laughs> <laughs> get one bro. We we about to run. You gotta get we about to run these boys. Let's do it. Well, People worry, already throwing ten thousand dollar tournaments out here for 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 United. I'm I'm trying to get some money. I'm oh, with it. Let's I go. like money. <laughs> <laughs> so so um, actually, y'all bringing that up makes a perfect thing. I have to go. You do. Ah, yeah, all right. Dude. Well, ah, I go. not a problem, bro. Appreciate Pleasure you jumping in. Hey. We're gonna keep it going till the lady we said hey. Catch y'all. Catch y'all. Yep. We'll catch him next week. I'm gonna be watching. Oh, you about to oh, miss this entire conversation about the set of deadly sins, though. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. You're gonna miss that one, but that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> I got no <laughs> before we do that. Before you go, though, I do want if you can watch about? this. I want to show y'all this, and I don't know if y'all heard about it. Uh, Doki V. Okay. Is a Korean game coming out? This is what Pokemon should have been. Um, I'm gonna play the clip here. Give me one second. Because this right here was amazing. I'm gonna switch mics real quick. Let me know if you let me know if y'all can hear it. No, we cannot hear no. it. No, can't hear no, can't hear it. All right, give me a second here. These big-headed children. <laughs> well, I'm going to let you keep watching for now. I'm going to try to pull it up a different way real quick. Right. Definitely looks like a big open world. Yeah. yeah, that's nice. That's real nice. Graphics look nice. I know some people appreciate that. But. At least the environmental graphics look amazing. It looks like you're immersed in the world. Yeah. Yeah, Pokemon could definitely take some notes for that one. That's what I'm sure. Mm -hmm. But that's the problem with most of the the games, though, that are out now. The developers know that you're going to buy it anyway, so. Yeah, it looks it looks cool. I mean, it looks cool. I mean, I'd give it a shot if it was free. I don't know if it's free or not, but it looks cool. There's like a free demo. I give it a try. My laptop will hold up for it. 
Dokev. Okay. Definitely looks interesting. It does look interesting. Get up myself. All right. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened with it, but for some reason the audio didn't want to come through. You guys got a general idea of how how it looked, though, right? Yeah. Yeah, I can I can see the potential. I can see the potential. You got comment on Twitch. I'm trying to see it. They celebrate. Like, looking at these make, screenshots like this, yeah, this, this looks like it's gonna be pretty good. It's definitely gonna be a a combative for Pokemon. Oh yeah, you fight with yeah. your Pokemon with your creatures. Like you got a mouth. Oh, you use to fight so with it's like. Them. Yeah, oh, the the two on ones. Okay. Yeah. Oh no, four okay. or five on ones. Like it gets. <laughs> Ain't no one on ones, bro. <laughs> Ain't no one on ones. Ain't no one on ones. All right, we can. Okay, we can roll with that. We can roll with that. Ain't no one on ones. No, we, everybody getting jumped. All right. I guess. So. All right. I guess, man, Pokemon oh, better better God. make their next game like more Legend Arceus if that's gonna be the case. Yeah. Uh, that 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 has, that's gonna probably sell way more than the remake coming out next week. But they get, they get jumped Power Ranger style in the name of justice. In the name of justice. In the name of the moon, they I shall get love, punished. I would actually love to see a, a Pokemon game where you play the view of the Pokemon. A lot of people hey. have been asking for that. A so, lot of people have asked for a game like that too. Do y'all remember the game on what's called Mystery Dungeon? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yep. so never played it, but I've seen it. Be, it looks cool. It, but that was supposed to be their first try at something like that, but the fact that it will it will be hard for them because they're trying to get to where you can switch Pokemon and stuff like that. Like the only way they would do it, they have to make it like a legit fighting game, like taking us on we switch out Pokemon. Damn, like what Pokemon should have been, but <laughs> that's an argument for another day. Yeah, we know you're right now. But yeah, I will catch right. you guys next yeah. week. Um, All right, sir. Yeah, enjoy right. the date, sir. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy the date. Enjoy the date. Have fun. I will. Have a drink. For, have a shot for us, as they say. Have a shot for us. I, oh, hold on. I'll do that now. <laughs> yeah, I'll be right back. I think my food came here. I'll be right back. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh, appreciate it. Uh, was it IK88? Was good. Appreciate the jump in. You said they sell it broken. Uh, which which game are you talking about? They sell broken. Yeah, the Doki V. Oh, so yeah, he said they uh, they make you a beta tester. Okay, okay. Well, I might have to jump in on that. If you have the link for that, definitely. Send me that yes. one. I was drinking Jack yesterday. So definitely send me that. I appreciate that, um, and I'll look into it as well. Okay, okay. We appreciate it. We appreciate it. Shout thank you, thank panda. you. I appreciate it, sirs. So, let's go ahead and then jump into I wanted to show that because we were talking about the, like, the whole Pokemon thing, and I was like, I feel that we're, we are well beyond, we should have something like that for Pokemon. Yeah. Like, they keep giving us these, these half-assed yes. worlds, and it's starting to irk me. Like Sword and Shield was it was a good Pokemon game. Don't get me wrong, you know what I mean. But if this is out there, this and this is another one of those situations where I'm talking where we're talking about the books, the book adaptations and things. Like the special effects are there. You the technology that you have. Why are they not using the technology? Right. Got you. Okay, appreciate that. So they said he said that. They'll sell it broken and then you make your baby sister. I have to look into that. I have to look into that a little bit more. Because especially for something like Doki V, oh yeah. If I can figure out the beta tester stuff, I will send that to all of you so we can jump in on that. Because that sounds, that looks like it's going to be dope. For real, for real. Well, that's how most games come out now, especially on um on the Xbox side of, of video games. Uh-huh. When you do that program, uh, I think it's like the alpha program, I think it is. Okay. Okay. Uh, there's certain games that they will put out way before they're even done and they think they're close to being done and you'll play it and you'll make notes of it and you're pretty much 
are an unpaid game tester. Huh. Okay. Uh, but you get first crack. Like your your benefit is you get first crack of the game. Like Ark Survival, that right. game came out as a free demo. Then it became a beta test. And then they're like, you know what? We're not updating this game until it's done. And right. then you got the revamped Ark Survival something something. And the game's flawless as you move up. Right. It's still glitchy in the beginning, but once you rank up and you're far deep in the storyline, right. it's a great game to play. Okay, okay. Appreciate it, appreciate it. So yeah, then everybody listening, now yes. y'all know how to get into the beta testing. Because I'm going to start doing some of that. I know I did beta testing for New World. Uh, they had like two or three rounds of beta testing on New World for PC. That game's amazing as well. If you all have not had a chance to try it, you got to look at it. Oh, are it you is... a part of the PC Master Race? Uh, no, 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 not Master Race. I, I, so, so that, because that's a whole conversation, but I will say my two cents here there is no console better than another console. It's just what you got used lie. to first. Why are you lying? It's just what you got used to first. Why are you lying? PlayStation no. and Xbox, sir. I, even, even though I am a Sony head, oh, I dude. still understand. I still I still hold to what I said. I still hold to what I said. I so <laughs> now certain friends of mine, of course, and you all know who you are. Yeah. Yes, I'm always gonna dog the Xbox. Because it's how our friendships are built. <laughs> it's I how our friendships are built. <laughs> I deal with him all the time. Uh, but I understand it, and it's it's not has nothing to do with that. No. And you see, as he said, PC. He, yeah, you got kind of got a point on that. It, it's only because PC came first, bro. Like PC <laughs> came first. It is the yeah. Yeah, no, I like yeah. my controllers. Thank you. <laughs> PC is definitely the innovator of, of video games, oh, and, yeah. and it will always it will always be it will always be on um, the cutting edge. The 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 parts and pieces that are inside an actual case for a computer that it will never you will never see yeah. that inside a console. Never. Oh, yeah. The yeah. closest the closest you may see that in is maybe. An Xbox Series X, but it's still nowhere near as strong as a PC. Until <laughs> until you could connect a console to an actual PC, oh, we yeah. will never see a console beat PC. But when That's... it comes to the debate of Xbox versus PlayStation, it's it's pros and cons that you have to go back and forth with because PC uh, PlayStation has their pros, Xbox has their pros. And it's just who has the more cons, really? Bro, I'm just petty. That's all it is. Hey, no, <laughs> I hear true. you, man. Listen, I used to, I used to be just a I Microsoft guy. You want to hear, oh, you hear the funniest thing? This is really, this is literally the reason why I prefer Sony to uh, Xbox is because I like the controllers better. It's, I've, it's I've as low as that. Been, I've always been a symmetry type person, like, and the controllers are symmetrical. All right, Death. Like, Xbox. I'm gonna start calling you Death the Kid. Right, X- Xbox. <laughs> you, know, you got like this joint would be like up here or whatever on the Xbox controller, and that's that's really the basis of my whole like hatred. But anyway, I just don't like your controllers. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Okay, it's I'm crazy. back now. What are y'all debating? <laughs> PlayStation versus Xbox. Yeah, <laughs> conversation came up. But yeah, no, uh, I used to be a big Microsoft guy. I would be like Xbox for life. You ain't get me on that PlayStation. Right. And then, you know, God of War became exclusive. Yep. Iron Man became yeah, exclusive. So, God of War is... so I I, I'll I'll give this to PlayStation. PlayStation has it its exclusives. Like one of the yeah. big exclusives that were near to dear to me Fire that Man. were on both an Xbox and a PlayStation were the baseball games. Oh, and yeah. okay. once, once PlayStation took ownership of the show and Xbox said, we're not going to do All-Stars Baseball no more, I had no more baseball to play. I had the, the old school slide to the yeah. left, slide to the right, you bunt by tapping the, the button. It was, it was terrible. The RBI Baseball Series. Yep. But then one of the things that I liked that um, <laughs> Xbox recently did was – when the license was up, they jumped on it. They made a deal with um, PlayStation that they wanted to do the show on um, on Xbox, but 
PlayStation got greedy and said, okay, for every copy sold, we'll give you the rights to put it on the Xbox, but for every copy sold, we want like 60%. Right. What? Mm-hmm. That's crazy. So, so that's, Microsoft that's said, so yeah, this, is where I, this is where I say Microsoft will always be superior to PlayStation because they, they, they could flex. And they know how they to. got They're, the money. Okay. They do have the flex of money. That's I was right. like, all right, fine. You want 60%? We'll take the 40 For every copy sold, yes? All right. The first week that they got the license, Game Pass. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah. Biggest <laughs> middle finger to PlayStation <laughs> in the history of video games. Nice. They put MLB The Show on Game Pass. They nice. got it in contract where they'll have it over the next couple of years. And... People on the PlayStation. Oh, and they dropped it a whole month earlier yep. than the original release date. So people on PlayStation were like, "They're gonna get all these uh, cards and these levels a month ahead of us, and we yep. can't even get it." It's a PlayStation game. Well, yeah, y'all wanted to talk shit about Xbox. Well, here, here, <laughs> here you go. You know, they so. effed around and found out. They effed around right. and found out, as they said. Yeah. So. But like I was, I was when it comes between Xbox and Sony. I had I had a PlayStation. I went from doing my gaming. I went NES, Genesis, PS One, Dreamcast, PS Two, three sixty, and then I stopped at three sixty because I I just didn't see the appeal of the Xbox One, and I just got out of college when I came out. So I was a broke college student, so. Post graduate college student, so I just stuck with the three. I just stuck with the Nintendo. Nintendo's always gonna be my bottom B word. If that, if anything, Nintendo's gonna be. Oh, that right God there. Bless that. God bless that console. Nintendo, that Genesis. console is the God most underrated console, console yeah. in the history God of consoles. God bless that console. Yep. The games on that console, by far, hands down, probably the yeah. best lineup you would have in video game history. So I those mean, will switch. Sonic. Oh yeah. Um, any Ninja Turtle game on that console. Period. Like, I'm, so I'm a big switch. fan of Ninja Turtles. That's like yeah. that's my thing. That's oh, my yeah. go-to. Say, so, like, you know, you can now have the Sega emulator. They have the Sega emulator on the Switch now. For those, it's the upgraded the uh, the updated account for the Nintendo Online. You have all N64 and all of Sega. Want to do a little walkthrough real quick, sir? Uh, hey, have at it, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm, with it. I'm with it. You gonna give me a little walkthrough on how to do that? Where where, where <laughs> I find that? <laughs> it's, it's it's in your. Uh, if you go to the store, if you go to the e store, uh-huh. and just type in Sega, it'll pop right up. Remember the yeah. uh, the NES and SNES game packs that they had? Right. It's the same thing. Oh, well, don't play with my emotions because if they have hyper, oh, yeah. I'm probably gonna be like, all right, guys, that's the, that's that's the night for so me. I'll catch y'all tomorrow. Right. Catch y'all they tomorrow. Got, <laughs> what they got? Streets of Rage 2, Sonic. So they got N64 too. Don't forget N64 got added I'll too with that upgrade. N64 got added so too. Hard. Now the thing is though, in order to use it, X-Men you have to upgrade more. your your online your Nintendo account to the new, I guess the new upgraded version of the Nintendo account. That's my understanding because I know they upgraded what you get with that and everything too. So, but you can yeah, download waiting. it without that. I'm waiting because because if you because I know a lot of people not buying because they have the um, new Animal Crossing DLC with it too, and that comes like, with it to... too. Yep, yeah, the Animal a... Crossing DLC comes with it. Yep, I know a lot of people have problems with that. Like, what, what if you don't want Animal Crossing? You just want the the Genesis or the N64. They'll probably release something like that eventually without the Animal Crossing DLC. They're just trying to get the Animal Crossing thing because that was, if not one of their biggest selling games, which I get from a business aspect. They're just, they'll, those people will just buy it anyway. Like, oh, with the Animal Crossing DLC, hey, get some old games on top of it. So business-wise, yep. I see why they did that. X-Men 2 Clone yeah, Wars changed me. Yeah. That X-Men 2 Clone Wars game? Insane. Yeah, nah, you, that's, I'm rocking with it. X-Men insane. Two. Yeah, those yeah. X Men games. I mean, oh yeah, we had so we had such good video games back in the day. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yo, when I talk to these young folk <laughs> about our era, I'm like, y'all, 
Y'all call us old heads, which if y'all only knew, like we were killing y'all, bro. Nightcrawler. Hold up, hold up. Okay. So wait a minute, wait a minute. So he brought up Nightcrawler, y'all, right? Do y'all remember the arcade version of X Men with the eight controllers on deck? Mm-hmm. Nightcrawler was one of my favorite people in that game because he's like he'd jump back and he'd be zooming back and forth across the screen and blow everything up on the entire screen. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah. But that actually takes me to like one of our matchups for the day. So I'm gonna throw this out there. So and y'all can't get mad at me. I'm gonna get mad. I don't know. What is it? <laughs> y'all can't get mad at me. Hold up, where'd it go? Why is it not? See, now I want to play. It's it's playing with my emotions. Cause that, cause it knew we was gonna get mad. <laughs> it knew we was gonna get mad. I think <laughs> that's what happened. All right, well I'm just gonna say it. Nightcrawler, uh-huh. versus Beast Boy. Who you got? Nightcrawler versus Beast Boy. Nightcrawler versus Beast Boy. Who you got? I think I'm gonna give it to Beast Boy. Okay. He has, he has more variety with his ability. True. Jay, what you got? Um. All right. So we're talking about Nightcrawler versus Beast Boy. Uh huh. Talking about someone who can come in and out of dimensions, do sneak uh-huh. attacks, attack from behind, <laughs> versus someone who can transform into a. 800 to 900 pound gorilla with the strength of 10 men who could probably rip someone's arms off. Okay. Probably going to go with Beast Boy. If you get, if he gets a grasp of Nightcrawler, it's over. Yeah, it it's, if he catches, it's... Now, I got to remind y'all of this. I got to remind y'all of this. Uh, IK88 said Nightcrawler. Remember, remember what Jay just said, and I quote, a man who can go in and out of dimensions. I knew he was going to focus on that. Yep. <laughs> Do y'all not remember Nightcrawler is a sword fighter? Wait, he is? He's a blade user. Is he? By nature. He uses two blades in his hands and keeps a dagger in his tail at all times. That is... That is I didn't forget about that. 100% fact. I didn't know that. I did I not know that. As a great I, knew, but I forgot about it completely. Because I didn't know. I really didn't know. So if I'm not mistaken, he was that. a he was a sword swallower in, in the circus, yep, right? In the circus, yeah. Yep. Yeah, so he yep. definitely messed with blades for sure. Um, but I still got all I have the, to do grab my at, grab me grab me by the throat grab Nightcrawler by the throat. If he disappears, that arm is gone too. Mm. That body part is gone. You're making valid points. You're making valid points. But so no matter what you grab I never him need as, a fox with you, bro. I gotta keep, you know, I gotta hold. <laughs> I hold, I gotta hold true to my. If my... Nightcrawler goes to his head, I'm still gonna teleport in your head and take your head with me. Yeah, that's a one shot kill. All right, fair enough. All right, this this is this is starting <laughs> to get. You know what right. this is sounding like? Remember the old schoolyard game? Remember the old oh, schoolyard yeah. game where I'm like, "You're frozen." No, I'm not. Cause fire. Yep. <laughs> this is what this, this is what's about to happen. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Okay. So you just said if Nightcrawler grabs uh, the head of Beast Boy while let's uh, say he's in the gorilla form, whatever, he zaps out. Done deal. Right. Right. You get a hold of Beast Boy. What does Beast Boy do? He turns into something smaller where you can't see. True. Right. True. True. If by chance he can transform to an earwig, crawl into your brain. You you could go ahead and and That's zap like, okay, into yeah. in and out of dimensions you want. He starts chewing on your brain. What are you going to do after that? I can give You're you there. that. I can give you that. I can completely agree with that one. Okay. If he can pull that one off, yes, yeah. This is why we don't size it. Yeah, but yeah, it would have. It would literally be. And I it, see now. Now here y'all go. Remember we were talking about you learn from everything you do, right? right. This circles right. back to the conversation we had earlier about use of imagination. If you don't have the imagination to think of turning into something like that, that's an automatic fail. He would have lost. I don't know. I but right, because of that fact, because of the fact that he has Beast Boy, we all know is creative as heck. He is. Because he does have that type of imagination, he would have tried it. 
he would try something like that. I would give you that one hundred percent. And and you gotta you gotta look at his reflexes as well, because it's not like oh he's held for ten seconds, twenty seconds, and then he transforms. He'll transform yeah. in a drop of a dime. Instantly. Yeah. Instant. 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 So his his reflexes alone are maybe up to par to the reflexes that Nightcrawler could show. Right. I'm with it. I'm not. I'm. I won't argue that. I will give you. So basically, it's going to come down to the imaginative the imaginative use of their power at that in that particular fight. Right. I will. I will rock with that answer. So we'll we'll say we'll call it a tie. We'll call it a tie. Then on oh. that one. I'm okay. With it. I was going to bring up a point, but I guess we... Go for it. Uh, no, 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 no. Point. Okay. My question is, would Nightcrawler kill? Because isn't he a devout Catholic? Nightcrawler will um, kill if given the will. right reasons. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's one of those situations. Oh, he's oh he's like um, Daredevil in that aspect. Then. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, no, he's more like Peter Parker. Ah. You know, he's more like Peter Parker. If we all, I'm, I'm assuming, uh, have you all know about when Aunt May died in the comics? Yeah. And Kingpin had was the one who put out the hit. Yes. And Spidey, as a grown man, said, "Screw yep. all of you it's and your mothers. Yeah. I'm coming for you." And proceeded to dog walk the kingpin. This man who's been troubling him for years. Yep. Yep. He then proceeds to beat the living and dead yep. <laughs> life from this man. You know? And he could have done this the entire time. Could have. He could have beaten Kingpin within an inch of his life this entire time and not had to deal with any of this other stuff he's been dealing with. But because you pushed the right or wrong button, however you want to the look right at button. it, the right <laughs> you have now because created the right one today. <laughs> you have now created an evil hell spawn that is bent on killing any and everything in his path. Like that's how Nightcrawler is as well. He don't want to do it, but you push the right button, uh, he'll do it. Ah, uh, I see. Okay. Okay, yeah. I didn't know. I thought that might come into factor. So, it, yeah, no, I can see it. it. I mean, same with Beast Boy though. Beast Boy is not the type that's just gonna go on a murdering rampage, yeah. you know. He will eat your face. but he will do it if need be. So, okay, yeah, because Beast Boy is a vegan too, or yeah, isn't he a vegan technically, or maybe that's just recent cartoon stuff? I don't know. Unless he turns into a T Rex and decides to eat somebody, right? Yeah. <laughs> it really yeah, depends on the animal somebody. he is at that time, <laughs> like. That's a good point. This boy, point. the boy, is a vegan. The yeah. animals he turns into are, are not. The <laughs> they are. Right, they are not. They are not. Like, and if you look, if you're just solely looking at Beast Boy from like the Teen Titans anime or animation, then yeah, it's a little more lenient to oh, I'm vegan and I don't do this. But but if you look yeah. into like the Top animated. Video. Uh, movies that DC oh, yeah. puts out, it's a little Any more darker. Justice League or anything like yeah. that. Yeah. So you'll you'll see a little more darker side of, of Beast Boy from time to time, especially with the new mutation that he had. Um, yeah, that's something to look out for. Because if he pulls that out of the bag, everybody's over. Oh uh, yeah, that's a whole nother. Yeah. 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 I've noticed like I'm I'm kind of catching up with Young Justice here. And I think he's like getting a little bit more savage, a little bit more darker as it goes along. I'm like, oh, yeah. Okay, like I'm almost I'm at the second half of season three, so I'm right. up when he rejoined the um the Young Justice team officially. That's where I'm at. Okay, and he just introduced Ooh. Cyborg not too long ago. So I'm like, okay, all right, okay, Beast Boy. It's interesting how the especially with Young is how they're using the Teen Titans that are in Teen Titans, like the ones you know. It's very interesting right. how they're using them. And st- I hope Static chills back up, but no spoilers because I'm gonna probably finish that eventually. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm waiting to see Static come back, but that's just my honest opinion. Oh, Static. My God. All right. So now we get to the, the fun, the meat and potatoes of the day. Oh, are we getting to the meat and potatoes? The seven deadly sins. Oh, boy. Here we go. So what we're going to do is we're gonna I'm going to bring up each sin. Okay. And the you characters from... The yeah, I got them. I'll, yep, I'll pull up the images. Yeah. 
So it'll be from Seven Deadly Sins, the anime, and from Full Metal Alchemist. Full Metal Alchemist. And what I want to know, what I want to talk about is, one, who embodied the sin best? And then two, once we're done with that, what if we could alter the lineup to do the max, to be the maximum lineup for the seven deadly sins between the two shows? We'll take the winners, basically, and then put them all together and then kind of hypothesize what that would have looked like in each of those universes. Okay. Okay. Interesting. So we're going to start off with my favorite from actually both series, and that's Greed. Greed. So yes. in FMA, of course, we know Greed is like this one up in the top corner here. Mm -hmm. His skin turns basically into st like steel. He grows claws. He gets fangs once he finally his full homunculus form. And then you have Ban. 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 Who Bond. is just him. Like, I don't even know how to describe this man. He's like, Bond, he, bro. He doesn't he's die. He, he's an ex epic cook. Like, the fact that he uses a three three piece Boken is still by far one of the best pieces about him. That's big facts. By far. Um, so I guess let's start off by the sin of greed. Who do you think embodies that sin the best? So no contest. It's Bond. It's Bond, bro. Why do you say that? Why do you all say that? Ah, right, Jay, you go first, and then I'll what, come. What's more greedier than not dying and holding on to life? Okay. Like for, first and foremost, you got you got this character who who knows he could probably rip a hole in the fabric of time and space if he truly wanted to. Um, he could literally take over a country. He could literally do whatever he wants to do and choose not to. And then if he decides to let you get one over him and you kill him, he this greedy little bastard comes back and says, "Hey, Guess what? you ruined my you ruined my favorite shirt," and then punches a hole uh, in your chest. Like how you can't get more greedier than that. I mean, don't get me wrong. Um, Greed from Full Metal Alchemist um, in homunculus form is is no joke and no laughing matter. But you put these two to throw hands, and it's a no contest. It's, it's this uh, on this episode on one sided ass whoopings is what you would get. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. What about you, vocab? Oh, you see, I changed your name to Death the Kid up there, right? Yeah, that's why I laughed at it. <laughs> I just, I laugh. That's the kid. So, all right. So, first of all, I'll give you that greed, the homunculus, right, is a more in your face um, variable of the sin, you know, like he, okay. the way he portrays his greed. However, Bond is without a doubt the better character. And as Jay said, what is more greedier than taking life? It's, first of all, not only is his greed apparent, he's forced into his greed from the time he's a child having to steal for survival itself. Then the man's whole basis of his greed is to find a shred of happiness. The man literally goes and tries to steal the fountain of youth he and is. to fall in love with a thin fairy who is fucking Slav's sister <laughs> loses her and and then that starts a whole other thing like come on and then we talking about this power like come on bro I, I punched you in your chest and now there's a fucking hole there <laughs> you fucking, like legit it's, it's just, plus he's Bond bro he, he's Bond I'm not going to argue that point in any capacity. I'm not. Uh, okay. No, I, I, I honestly have I have no argument I either. I'm, I'm in agreement with you all as well on this one. Like, Bond is by far the greediest of the two. Um, yeah. Wanting, I, he wants his best friend's life to be alive, but right. he also wants his woman 
to be alive. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? He knows that that's a complete contradiction. Like, one of them got to go. I want both, though. Like, mm-hmm. I want my best friend to keep yeah. be, be as badass as he is. And I want my girl, too. Yeah. And I want my best friend, Sloth. Because, you know, King, because... He's my best friend. You know, say he's my second best friend. Right. Yeah. But I still want he's, his sister. He's me all of and... <laughs> yeah. No, that sounds like the opinion of greed to me. I would like I didn't know much about Seven Deadly Sins between the sins, but I much as I know about Full Metal Alchemist, I probably would have given it to the Seven Deadly Sins because Greed mm-hmm. and Full Metal Alchemist is kind of a crybaby punk, if you really, really? want to think about it. He's super chill. Yeah, he's he's on the he's on the chill side of life. I agree. He's yeah. more so of a just like, look, I want everything because I don't know what I want. It's it's a like, well, since I don't know exactly what it is I want, why not just fucking have everything? Okay, now I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a devil's advocate in here. Do you feel that if greed were any older, if he had lived as long as Bond has lived, that maybe he would become better a better embodiment and the reason i say that is because with fma the homunculus were all relatively brand new most of them right. were still trying to find Themselves. their center quote unquote i mean you know? i feel like it would give him a better chance okay He's still losing though. <laughs> okay like, he'll just- probably have a better outlook on life but yeah, they're all yeah, they're all kind of babies in a lot of ways outside of what Envy, Wrath, and um Sloth maybe from Full Metal Alchemist. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head who like the oldest ones are, but I think those are the oldest three, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we got Bond with the with the dub on this one. Next round is Sloth actually. I'm King glad you went here versus with Sloth. From from green to sloth is the perfect yeah. transition. Uh, Harlequin again, same. It's, <laughs> okay, okay. Just because I that? feel like sloth, the homunculus was was lazy character creation. One, two, he's lazy as fuck. But I mean, that's what sloth is. But it's right. literally like he's just a hulking mass. that's like. I don't want to do nothing. Whereas Paul Quinn, first of all, didn't even do this the sin that he fucking is is presented with. But then spends the rest of his life mourning the sin, like taking responsibility for it. The man had amnesia, didn't know what the hell was going on there. And because of this, they were like, oh, you're you were just too lazy to protect us. So you got the sin of law. And then he's like, oh, shit, this happened? Damn, I got to make this for it. So real quick, you got to remember, sin is not, uh, the sin of sloth is not just laziness. No, I know. It's the the omission of the desire. You know what I mean? It's not, not, so the fact that he didn't remember played into the fact that he didn't have any care about it. I just said, (laughs) <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like you gotta, you know, you gotta keep that part in mind too. It wasn't right, more so you know, for you, but it was just in general. But you know, Snarl from Full Metal Alchemist has always reminded me of. He always reminded mm-hmm. me of Shikamaru from Naruto. He always gave me Shikamaru vibes. I'm not, not sure what? why, but he don't always gave me Shikamaru. Don't you? That's a disrespect, bro. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. That was just a get a little <laughs> laugh out of you. Just to get a little comedy in here. Just to get a little comedy. Nah. Hey, all right. Respect, I chuckle. Respect, I chuckle. <laughs> so he, he said, I chuckled as, as Death the Kid puts his cannons away. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I saw Patty <laughs> and Liz powering up in the background. <laughs> no, like, you ain't cool no, with me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I shook him off the MVP. Don't get me wrong, but Sloppy always just felt like he was just there. He's like, yeah, I got to do this task. Exactly. He's like a Napoleon Dynamite. If you think of the characterization, he's like a Napoleon. Like, yeah, I'm here. I got all these muscles. I'm supposed to dig this yes, hole, yeah. and I'm getting shot at. Whatever. I'm super fast. He's kind of like not Shigamaro, but you know what? Juggernaut. If you think yes, about it, I can see that. I can see that. It's kind of like another version of Juggernaut. Yeah. That'd actually be a good person. That'd actually be an easy, nah. interesting person. Nah, that's Juggernaut not probably. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. 
Uh uh-uh. uh. Sloth, like, <laughs> Sloth's ability would be the only person I, I could think that'd be a decent fight with Sloth. Um, if you all have seen uh, the Zodiac, Juni Tyson. Oh, I didn't know exactly. Oh, I never finished that, but that was pretty good. The ox, I like it. the ox guy in the yeah. in that show. I can see that. I could see Sloth and him being an, an actual decent, just because of the mindset of the two of them. Of I don't really want to be here. The ox really was a punk at the end of it. You know what I mean? Oh, but he was true. just there because of history, family history, and stuff like that. So, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. He was he was a beast. What he went through to get to there. But he mentally broke down right after that. So, um, so okay, okay. So we'll go. We go with King as the winner. I'm assuming yeah, I mean, everybody's in agreement. Yeah, the king of fairies Probably. too. Like he is. Yeah, he's the king of fairies. And you right. remember, like you said before, uh, the sloth sin was more defined in the failure to do things. So mm-hmm. he was yeah. he failed in protecting his sister. He, he continues to fail in confessing his love for Diane. Also um, true. He fails in being king of the fairies, so um, he, 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 he flies around on a damn pillow, for God's sake. Um, right, right. You, you gotta give it to you gotta give it to him, because at least Slaw from Full Metal Alchemist, he actually did something when he was mm-hmm. forced to do something. He failed, yeah, yeah but did he fail or was he overwhelmed? Yeah. Right. Yeah. By a little yeah. both. Okay. By a little okay. both. Well, then, since we had King, it's only right to bring his love interest in and we'll go with Envy. I right, see this one is a hands down in the opposite direction. Okay. Uh, Homophilus Envy is way more uh, uh, embodiment of the sin of Envy. Than Diane is. Like, literally, Diane is just, oh, Meliodas loves you, so I'm jealous. Whereas Envy the Homunculus, like, doesn't quit people in general because he's envious of what they of what they represent. Like, and right. True, true, true. And then his literal transformation is green with envy. Like, yeah. That's true. That he's the literal embodiment of the sin. Like, like it's it, almost a no contest. You can almost say right. almost a, if you're talking about if who represents the sin actually better, he almost wins by default. I'm gonna hate to say it. He almost right. wins by default. Like, he's a complete reflection of the sin itself. Whereas Diane doesn't, you know, it's it's like a hey, you know, well, it it's almost like a well, all the other sins were taken, so it's give I got this. Yeah. Like literally. Okay. <laughs> Because at least every other sin has like a core about them that hits their sin. But hers is just like, yeah, you know. I get get in the jealous rage every now and then because Elizabeth has Meliodas. But doesn't it also seem kind of cliche that Envy is a girl or also? Does it seem kind of ironic or cliche? Whereas I think in the original format of the 2003, I think Envy was androgynous, if I remember correctly, in the old yeah. three series. Envy would, Envy would take everyone else's forms because of the Envy. Like, right. that he would right. kill people and take their shape because he wanted what they had. And yeah. he would live their life. Like, that's how Envy... Yeah, so you're right. The, yeah. the androgyny of it. Yeah. yeah. So, no, yeah, I... It actually works. It works more in his advantage, if yeah. you think about it. That's, that's, that's 100% agree. There's nothing... There's literally no plots... Or any holes in anything you just said. I there's nothing. There's really nothing to add. Like the fact, yeah. if you didn't say he literally turns green with envy, I would have added that. But other than that, <laughs> I mean, you, you really covered it. This, once again, um, on a, yet another episode of one sided basketball. <laughs> <thing. laughs> Diane <laughs> doesn't take it. I'm sorry, she doesn't. Um, okay. I would like to see. I would like to see when they develop her character more to be more envious and not just right. of the whole Meliodas thing, maybe be envious of the fact that she doesn't know uh, how to really use her power yet, but all the other mm-hmm. sins do. And right. maybe she goes on her own because she wants to figure that out and, and get away from them because she's tired of seeing them 
thrive in their power, and she's right. not. So that would be the, cool uh, the to only see. other thing I can think of is like her height thing because she always has that size, that envy there. But that ended yeah. up getting uh, taught, it ended up getting dealt with at some point. I, yeah. I remember at some point she, she was shrunk down by somebody, I think Merlin shrunk her or something like that. So, yeah. Is it kind of like how yeah. Eddie's in Full Metal Alchemist with his short name? Like he always spazzes every time someone calls him short? Is it kind of like that? Yeah, but she's tall. Like she's a giant. Oh, okay. She's a giant. Yeah, she's, a, she's, a, she's of a giant race. So she's just too big to do anything. So she wants to be smaller so she can be around everyone and go in the buildings and, you know, stuff like that. So, ah, I see. Yeah. Okay. So I, I am, I'm completely agreeing with the Envy. Envy takes the dub on that one. So now we get into the the more difficult ones, I think. Personally, eating potatoes, gluttony. Mm. Okay, so this is a tough one. This is a tough one. This is for definitely me, a tough one. For me, though, I have Merlin because of the um, the abstract way they took the sin for her, okay. which is. Her gluttonous nature for knowledge, like that's, okay. that's what her character uh, development is, and it actually like her thirst for knowledge and continually, continuously uh, trying to attain it actually has effects on the world. So I gotta give it to Merlin. Plus, I mean, Merlin's kind of fire, but like as she's like this like warlock wizard witch bitch. That fucking just does whatever the fuck she wants, and, you know. She kind of does. She kind of yeah. does. But gluttony on on the FOMO Alchemist side, like literally eats people. So anything, anything. Yeah. yeah. But he's kind of a simpleton too. Yeah, like he's, he's, he has part of his nature is that he's childlike. So, you know. But so I got I got Merlin, but at least this wasn't like a super like. <laughs> okay. It's complete. One so you say not a complete love that one. That aspect of Merlin, though, that the the gluttony for knowledge and attaining it is fucking fire. Yeah, they're they're go gluttonous in their own ways. One has a glutton for knowledge. The other one is just the what the more traditional glutton you would think with food and eating right. and things yeah, of that. They nature. went more on the nose with it. Okay. So you can, yeah, you can say the Seven Deadly Sins one's a little bit more original, where the Full Metal one was more like the cliche. Like I, I think I mentioned with the last one, gluttony is more what you would think the cliche of gluttony would look like, where gluttony of knowledge is not something you see too often. So the Seven Deadly wins in the uniqueness department, where I think, like I said, still be a close matchup, but I, it, but it, it could probably go either way. I'm not sure. Too much. I haven't seen too much of Seven Deadly Sins, so I'm just going by what you guys are describing the characters. Do y'all know the... Merlin's backstory? Mm, no, I don't remember it off the top of okay, my head. So I'm not gonna lie. I can't remember the name of the power, but basically, she has this like special power that has to do with the knowledge, like attaining knowledge or whatever. And so she's approached by Demon King and a king goddess, right? And she's like, okay, well, I'll side with whichever one of y'all like can give me the best gift, whatever. So the demon king is like, okay, well, I will give you the protection <sighs> so that the goddess can't do shit to you, whatever, and I'll give you all the knowledge of like the demons and shit. And then the goddess chick is like, well, I'll give you protection from the demon and I'll give you like divine some divine sense, right? And so basically she's like, well, she's I'm protected by both of them. Neither one of them can do shit to me. So she just takes the gifts and is like, yeah, fuck y'all, and leaves. And so, <laughs> <laughs> That's a mad move so, right like, there. So, like, punish her, because obviously they're not, like, they're, like, what the fuck? She is, like, like, her whole little city or, like, village ha is, like, full of magician type. Right. Like, she's a witcher shit. So they wipe out, like, her whole village and make her, like, just by herself. And then she lives for like years and all that or whatever until we meet her and all that. But yeah, that's our backstory. <laughs> huh. Well, that's already then. <laughs> well, already <laughs> then. I was not aware of that. I didn't. Yeah. That's also that also plays a part why I chose her. <laughs> that's ah, just I see. crazy. <laughs> I see. Makes sense. 
Well, just to do a, a quick point here, um, looked up the gluttony real quick, and it's habitual greed or excessive in eating. So, where full male alkalinist took the eating side of things, seven, seven deadly sins took the habitual greed uh, off of that. So, um, this one, like you said, what is a tough one. Honestly, in my opinion, um, I would call it a tie. Only a because tie. I'll take that. I, I would call it a tie only because, uh, like you just finished saying, um, she she her thirst for knowledge is is pretty much eternal. So that's mm-hmm. her way of being gluttonous of just pulling in as much info as possible. Where gluttony from the other side is just I'm just gonna eat and eat. And eat. Mm-hmm. So I'd call this one a tie. Um, I don't. Th- th- there's not much that you could look up where uh, there's not much that you could look up unless you just Google gluttony and you go off of who shows up first. That's that's pretty much right. all you can go off of, honestly, with this one. Okay, okay. I'm I'm actually completely okay with the tie. On that one, like you said, one took it, you know, one direction, and then the other oh. took it the other direction. But both are direct definitions of what gluttony is. So mm-hmm. uh, it really just depends on aesthetic at that point. Uh, so yeah, no, okay, all right. So like I said, we, we're going to get into the the like I said, the more difficult ones now as we're going through here. So here's the next one. Lust. Uh huh. Oh boy. I say raffle last. Lust. Time. Oh boy, that Love. that's this is a tough one. This um, is a super tough one. This is why I took notes before we even had a conversation. Because <laughs> I was like oh, okay. thinking on the spot. I don't know that I can do it. <laughs> right, right. Okay, does the lust of something deadly thing that lightning powers? From what I'm looking at that picture, there she has lightning powers. The ability to to, to change your emotion. Gauther can oh. can affect your emotional stability. And memory. Oh, okay. She's a doll too, mind you. Right, he's a doll. He's actually oh. being controlled by something else. Yeah. By his, his say, actual body. They. If you guys, they are a they, doll. Right, really, they <laughs> are a doll. Right, actually, we, very we don't even know if, if Gunther's a, a boy or a girl yet. We right. still don't know. We don't oh, know well, no. or nothing. We in do the, know. In the... Yeah, Gunther is a boy doll. However, he's designed with the looks of his creator's lover. Which is right. why he has the feminine slash male chomp like. Uh, oh, he's kind of like um, it's kind of like um, don't Chuck maybe Chucky. I don't know. I'm thinking of some, something. Um, I don't know why Chucky popped in my head, but that's the first thing that popped in my head. But I don't know. This is kind of a tough one. Okay, I thought she had lightning powers, but I think <laughs> I think I think the lust from Southern Dublin City has the better abilities compared to lust from Full Rockman. I mean, she was kind of a temptress. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I would, in as far as the sin itself goes, that's the first question. I what would body's the to, sin? Uh, I would give it to lust from uh, Full Metal Alchemist, just because I feel like she embodies what what uh, our representation of lust is, and then she uses it. For manipulation, she's not actually out here fucking like she's just like counterpoint. Yeah, tease you and get you to like love on me or whatever, and then I'm gonna use you. And okay, I heard a counterpoint. You said what? Yep. I heard a counterpoint in there. What? Represent representation of lust to whom? Oh, I like Ooh. that. I mean, yeah, society. Because in that, because in that, <laughs> life can go it's both ways. ways. Yeah, right. Just in general. Yeah, yeah. Just in so general. Gauther with with the androgyny right. has that appeal either direction. That's right. That's right. That's true. Lust normally. It's well, lust like... could also change shape, though, couldn't she? In FMA. Yeah. Yeah, but she not as much as Envy. But Envy was better at that. I think she yeah. only does it once in a while. Yeah, she, she only, like only dealt with guys. More so lust and FMA yeah, only so dealt she, with guys. She, on the manipulative aspect of yeah. using lust. Where Gother is his lust comes from um emotion, like his his 
he lusts for emotion because he's a doll. So he doesn't really have real true feelings for himself. Or which, anyone else. Right, which is why uh, his power comes from like imitating emotion. So in the newer season, Gauther was hidden in the demon realm. Mm-hmm. They they actually released his his actual body, um, and so that's where you get you like you were saying he gave that explanation of him being a doll, yeah. and you know he created it for his uh, his lover and everything. Yeah. However, I guess it, it begs to differ or begs the question because this is something I always had with that that whole scenario. Okay, but is the Gauther doll now its own sentient entity, separate oh. from? the actual sin out there you know what i mean like right. he's been he's been releasing energy all this time into this quote unquote puppet that has been fighting the sin you know what I'm saying the like fighting mm-hmm. the demons so even if you if you're leaking that much power out to be able to fight head to head with with the commandments the 10 commandments right like you cannot right. have been that's no small amount of energy. That's all yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, that's not. That's not easy. That's not. You know what I'm saying? Kind of There's like. There's no like, way. Yeah. So Probably with that being the case, is he now his own entity moving forward? Mm. Because if that's the case, then Gauther would be they, right? But, mm-hmm. Gauther, the the puppet version. Mm-hmm. His, and Gauther the sentient version. the sentient being, right? The human being. Like the Gauther human being doesn't have any lustful ways. When they finally showed him, yeah, he actually overcomes it. Right. He is he'd overcome it because anything that he had is now, I personally feel is now in the in the doll. And like you were saying, the doll version of Gauther now. Is lust is they're they're lusting for emotion. Excuse me, emotional connection. Mm-hmm. Um, which they do by manipulation of any kind, from anyone mm-hmm. and anything to the point of memory erasure. Yep. Like he erased people's memory. He erased the seven deadly sins memories yep. on numerous occasions. He's been doing it for centuries. They said, and then he'll wow. disappear. He'll go ghost. When they first found him, he was a, a suit of armor for crying out loud. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? He fell in love one time. And that's but he didn't know what he did. He short circuited. Right. That's part of his uh his lust is that uh he fell in love with this princess chick or whatever the guy, and she died while they were having sex. <laughs> and uh, that's actually um, what happened. Yeah, yeah. And, and um he got blamed for her death. And they, he took his heart out, his doll heart, or whatever, and tried to like give it to the princess to like bring her back to life, whatever. But it didn't work, and so he lost his heart, and that's how he like lost that emotion. Right. Yeah. So, like, I I see the appeal for FMA lust. Because she does, she embodies what most guys are gonna say is a sensual, and even ladies will say is that that sensual attraction. It it's the, the general for the, the gender, general, yeah. right? The generalized sensual attraction. She tried to be that seductive individual to get her way. As far as abilities, though, of what oh, no, yeah, yeah. If actually they fight, make if you, they fight, they win. <laughs> I think Gout, right? Gouther's Gouther's abilities, as far as what lust can make someone do. Are far closer to what lust embodies yeah. as a sin, I think. I so I would have to give it. It's it's small, but I would have to say Gal. Yeah, I think I have to give it to Gal. She just has better power. Just a little bit. Yeah, yeah. it's an edge. It's an edge for sure. Yeah, it probably gives her the edge in this one, even though, as we all agree, lust probably embodies the spirit of the sin. The other character does seem like to be the better character. The yeah, better... That's why I said for the first part, like just as far as yeah, of this yeah, part. right. Now, yeah. The big boy. Now come the last two. Ooh, I'm boy. gonna do. These are my favorite two as well. Yeah. Like yeah, you gotta, I can't. You gotta, you gotta fucking... 
You gotta say, I had to say these two for. Hold on, let me make sure I get these. You have to. There's no. There's no way. There's no other order to put them, but in the last. (laughs) No, none. They're they're literally the leaders of the fucking sin. Like this. no, these two well, first. Yeah, but I'm oh, man. To me. Yeah. Man, I'm not was I pissed when I found out he was a sin. He, <laughs> man, was I pissed when I found out he was an homunculus and I read the manga. I was pissed. Oh, I, yeah, was, the, the, the I was literally, yeah, I yeah, was literally pissed. I was yeah. like, wow. I was like, touche, touche. I did not see that coming. I was like, that was a good twist. First of all, let me just say Escondor. Not even just as the winner, but like we're just gonna say his name, Esquinor. <laughs> just say his name, just to say but, the name, huh? Yeah, because I mean, cause we're talking about the sin of pride, bro. Like, right. Just, just say his name. <laughs> Esquinor. But uh, this is this one is is very hard as far as like embodiment because uh-huh. um. Damn, I forgot. I forgot his name. Uh, it's, I think it's something with a C or something. Salem Bradley, if you're thinking of the Full Metal yeah, Alchemist. Yeah. What is Celeste? What was what, his? Salem or Sa- uh, Salem. Yeah. I think Salem or Salem. Salem, yes. Salem yeah. So, the, the motherfucking bodies, the, 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 the portion of pride of like looking down on somebody, like I'm better than you, being proper that way, he is fucking just like. He shits on everybody that way. Like, <laughs> it's just always an aura, an aura of like, yeah, I'm better than you. And then uh-huh. Esquinor is, he has a split personality. So you get to see like his, uh, his nighttime side, like go through a growth of humility and stuff where his fucking daytime side is literally, and Walking embodiment of the sun itself. <laughs> like, like, yeah, I mean, you you're the sun. I mean, you, does he get more prideful than that? Like, bitch, I'm the sun. I'm the reason for everything. <laughs> True. And he's True. a he, and he's a fucking beefcake. <laughs> they were like, "Yo, let's uh, just you know give him more abs than humanly possible. Fucking buff him up, and just yeah, and then give him a, a battle axe because because nothing you- says a beast more than a yeah, one-handed you know, battle axe. You like can't be that big <laughs> swinging a thin sword. It's like a toothpick, bro. You're, yeah, you're like the man is a one-handed yeah, battle, battle axe, battle like." Axe. That he he that he rocks like a rapier. That's, let's not let's Stanley. not avoid that point. He rocks a battle axe like a rapier. That's a in any game you play. That's a two handed weapon, my man. In Try. any game you play, <laughs> legit. And he's just like, yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think how many axe people have used one handed. Wait, any, wait, there was that guy on Team to Girl from Yu Yu Hakusho. Didn't he just use his axe with one hand too? Yeah, he my, did. He also yeah, one handed yeah. a fucking battle axe. So I'm gonna yeah. give it to uh Escanor for being Escanor. <laughs> he <laughs> looks okay. like he would be more of pride than Salem Bradley. That was just a good mind fuck. He literally has a giant fucking lion tattooed on his back. Like that's where his his thing. I mean, they all have like the little tattoos and shit, but his shit is a massive lion head, just the whole encompassment of his back. Right, like if you're looking at Pride, I think Escanor fits better than Salim Bradley. And when you visualize, his, uh, if you visualize it in your head, one of his yeah. powers is literally throwing a solar flare at your ass. Like, he throws a solar flare at you. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, that's all you had to say. Damn, him with it in his hand, just holding a ball of fucking fire. Like, you're <laughs> just like, yeah. Okay, yeah, he <laughs> he would definitely be proud of Full Metal Alchemist. That yeah, yeah, that's yeah. almost a no contest. I I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a wrench in this time. Throw a wrench in it. I'm gonna throw the wrench this time. Good. I have to call a tie. I'll take it. I have to call a tie, and here's why. By definition, so. this is one of those where it's two different definitions to pride. There is the first one, a feeling of deep pleasure or satisfaction derived from one's own achievements. The achievements of those whom one is closely associated or the qualities or possessions that are widely admired. That is Salim. 
hands down. The second one, though, is consciousness of one's own dignity. Right. That is Escanor. That's Escanor, right. One hundred percent. I'll take your tie as far as the embodiment of this thing, but in the fight, Escanor is wiping this nigga. From his- well, in a fight, we're not talking about a fight right now. Though we're talking about the embodiment portion. Yeah, I'll take the tie. Because they I'll don't. I'll chime in with this because uh, I, I I see where you want to go with the tie. Okay, I understand okay. it. <laughs> I'm gonna it's this, and, I, and I'm glad I, I'm glad, kid, that you made the uh, that you made the uh, the comment of Escanor having his split personality. Right. Okay? Mm-hmm. So he is at his strongest. At high noon, mm-hmm. right, then slowly gets weaker from noon on. Right, we know how destructive he can be. We even know in uh, Pride from Full Metal Alchemist is is uh, is strong um, and destructive, right? But is is being defeated by the hero of the story? Technically, a fall, a continuous fall. Escanor, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit you with proverbs real quick. Okay, <laughs> go for it. Go it, for it. Was it was stuck. It was stuck. It was stuck in my head. I was like, wait, there's something that has to do with pride and falling. But so okay. it goes, pride goes before destruction, a haunting spirit before a fall. Escanor falls on a daily. Basis from noon on, day to day to day to day. Whereas Pride from Full Metal Alchemist has his fall one time only because of his defeat. So you're saying because you're saying he's only as prideful as he is because of the fact that daily he's in that weakened state. Daily he falls from his pride. Okay, okay. So Infamous clearly feels like he had to come back and make a comment about this. <laughs> we can't hear you. We can't hey. hear you, bro. Oh. Oh, okay. Well, if you if you hear us, start talking whenever you can. Okay. Uh, listen here. I understand Bradley. I understand little Bradley. But just on the definition alone, would you not say that or kind of embodies both of them? Because within his and, you know, yeah, Jay, that's stuff, he's still prime when he do. Yeah. Even yeah, true. Uh, he's yeah, bartending. Uh, he is. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. He he, he's of, of pride. All. Yeah. So. Y'all talk about Eskimo. You know I had to come up for Eskimo. (laughs) 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 Just even when when you explained with the definition, I saw you were going with that. I agree with it. But when Uh you think of pride, when you think of pride, put it like this. Not many people think of the first definition, they think of the second definition. That's the first one that comes on. True. So if we're going off, if you just ask somebody, anybody who's like not with a chin in their hand, so who do you think is more pride? Who do you think is the bottom of pride? Everybody, they mama, they grandmama, they great grandmama, their ancestors is going to say Eskimo. Right. Because that's the common, uh, the commonly... True, but like we said with like we said with lust, though we're not going off the common alley. We're going off the actual definition of the sin. So that's why I had, I had to throw it out there. I mean, that is definition, though. Yeah, definition. Did it? I mean, I can't change. But who said he can't change the definition? That, that's just how op he is. He changed <laughs> the definition. No matter how he's prideful enough to change the definition to fit him. That's how prideful <laughs> he is. <laughs> Look, his pride is the embodiment of what. The Dragon Ball Z has would call saying pride. I feel that he, yeah, he would be, he would give Vegeta a run for his money when it came to pride. I will I will agree with that one hundred percent. 
That's this is my thing. I think I want to do something since we're doing this, and I kind of missed out on everything. I want to. I think like next week we should all do like a, our own seven deadly sins with different anime characters. Ooh, I like that. Ooh, that's hey, okay. Explain. Do do research, bro. Do you know how much okay, like do I just said, Pride, Jita. I, Outside of some deadly sins, we got oh, everybody okay. a sin. Our own lineup. Okay. I, okay. I like okay. that. I like that idea. So, do we, we do that next a different anime? No, it can be you, your your own scene from any anime. Because a lot of us, this anime, a lot of us that haven't seen that, or uh, we a good explanation to explain why we feel like that person would take that sin. Right. Okay. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. Are we are we each doing a different anime? No, whatever it could be a, 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 a whatever anime for ever sin. Okay. Oh, like, oh. So you're saying take the sins and we can mix anime across the seven sins. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Got you. Okay. Like how okay. you was like Vegeta. Like right. right. Okay. Vegeta, so I, I was Gohan, thinking like you were taking DBZ and say, okay, these are the seven sins in DBZ. You know what I'm well, saying? That's DBZ, how I thought he was going. And honestly, I don't think you have all seven sins in DBZ. You don't. I don't oh, think I so. definitely do. No, nope. I definitely see it. I see all of them. Easy. No, you could probably Easy. get. You could probably get seven out of out of. We all know y'all are slow. Yep. <laughs> yep. Definitely. Oh yeah. Vegeta. And Vegeta's pride. Roshi lust. Yeah. True. Yeah. Uh, what is it? Uh, said so we had lot. Broly's lust, wrath. Had pride. Broly is wrath. Bulma's greed. Bulma's greed. Yep. Um, who are we looking for now? We're looking for Goku could be gluttony. Gluttony nah, is definitely yeah. Goku. His fight, his ability, his fighting is definitely gluttony. He's he's yeah. He's he always wants to keep going fight. and going. Yeah. He, he's the second definition of gluttony. Yeah. He's just... We just named off all seven right there. No, you did. You named five. So Rath which ones we Broly. Right. Gluttony was uh, was uh, Goku. Right. Pride is Vegeta. Right. Lust is um Roshi. 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 Greed, Greed Bulma. was Bulma. Yeah, five. Yeah. Yajirobe Yajirobe is sloth. And who? Envy. Yajirobe. Oh, okay. No, Envy. And Envy. No, wait. Oh, we didn't say Envy yet. Envy no, would be Ooh, that's Launch. a good question. Honestly, Envy no, would, could be also be Vegeta, to be honest. But... Be no, Envy. No, I thought I I've heard though Envy a perfect soul. You could do that perfect so. Frieza. Frieza is envy. Frieza. I'll take that. You know what? Yeah, I can see that. Frieza is envy. I'll take that. Yep. Okay. There you go. I'm glad you didn't name those super characters. I was about to punch you through the no, come on now, bro. I don't went for I don't went to deep dragon ball before I went to super. Yeah, because I was like, we I definitely said D B Z. I was like, no, no, you, you, I was you, waiting. I was like, name one. You know the other jealousy person? No, actually, wait a minute. No, no, no. Yamcha. no, Envy I'll could be no, Envy. No, Envy could be Goku Black. If you really want to go, could Envy be Goku Black. True. But we said DBZ, so we're gonna stick with DBZ. But we're going the whole franchise. Envy would definitely be Goku Black. Yeah. I still say Envy could could easily be Yamcha, hands down. What about Launch? Launch could Who? Launch could be Wrath. Honestly, you know what? Yeah, <laughs> she's probably more rough than Broly. So we're going with Super Broly. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, a two tone death jacket. Hey, so, question: so Who did y'all say? Who did y'all say was Envy? Uh, Frieza. You can take pick. Frieza. Frieza. Yamcha. Purcell. <laughs> I like that. He's petty. Hey, so he petty quick question. Well. Quick question. Could y'all not sit a Vegeta under Envy as well? Yeah, but you, you can argue that. You can only no be sins. one. Yeah. I said that already. So Wait, what about Piccolo? One, no, Piccolo wouldn't be any of the sins. No, just... no, no Piccolo wouldn't be any Piccolo of them. Piccolo is the most pure character in DBZ. On the show. I would say that. Yeah. I would definitely true. say that. Yeah, sure. Him, him and Tien, if anything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. But no, I'm with it. That's why I said if we do try to pick the seven sins out of a single each take a show and do the seven sins out of it. But if you want to cross, if we y'all want to cross them, we can cross them too. I mean, that's what we yeah, do. everybody should do their own seven deadly sins. And to make it fun, Vegeta off the list. You can't use Vegeta. That's too easy. Oh, 
Ball. How about we just how about we just not use Dragon Ball because we just went through Dragon Ball. Yeah, because we just went through yeah, we Dragon Ball. Yeah, no Dragon Ball. Ball. That's That's table. No Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball period off the table. Yeah. Okay. I'm with it. Okay. That sounds like a challenge. Interesting. I can't wait to see the list. <laughs> It's gonna be this list, these lists are going to be inc- insane. It's gonna be everything. How are you? I would. I would. If y'all didn't say take Dragon Ball, my lust would have probably been Bulma because she does have her lust and thoughty tendencies. But okay, we can take Dragon Ball off the list. Then. Yeah, oh, in Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball. I say after Freeza Saga, she kind of cooled down. I don't know. Did she also hit on uh, Trunks? Yep. <laughs> she, just saying, she hit on her own son, so See, that's kind of She did, right? She's she she a whole alien. Right. Her, her son, bro. <laughs> Y'all are wrong. Oh, all, right, right, all right. I already got my idea for Raft. I, 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 got, I think I got a curveball for Don't a lot of y'all. Don't bring it up now. Don't bring it up. I know I'm not. I got to write it down. I got to write it down after this. All right. So, last one The Kings. Do, 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 do. Champ is oh. here. Oh, this God. Is, to me, this Rad. is clear Ooh. tie. Man. It's clear who? Clear tie. Oh, clear tie? Yeah. I, I yeah, this like, might be a tie. I, feel like I, they I, would, I would have to say a tie. I mean, the homunculus so literally has raffle souls inside of him. Like, okay. I mean, Fumon Alchemist rap took down a... Took down a tank with a freaking sword. I mean, yeah, I, I wrote that in my notes. Literally, in a, I have that scene. If y'all of, wanted to play it, I have that scene. Stuff, oh, go for it. That's like a ball scene. Only person I even seen do that is Goemon from Upon the Third. I'm like, man, he's a Goemon right there. Yeah, yeah his sword is a really slept on anime on world, man. That's... What Lupin? No, um, Wrath, Full Malcolm's. Yeah, oh, he's, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's an underrated swordsman. His sword skills is ridiculous. Oh, unmatched. So, I, 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 don't, I don't know about unmatched, but he has amazing sword skills. Yeah. And then Meliodas is just, he's so sad. Now, here's here's the question. No, okay, never mind. I'm not going to go into that because that's going to start a... That's gonna start a... <laughs> if we start talking about swordsmen, that's going to be a whole other thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's another movie, episode. Yeah. That's, another that's another episode. episode. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a whole episode. episode. Anime swordsman. You know, people who have swords in their households. Like, we yeah, I know. We all have swords and blades in the house no, right now. So, I, I, I don't. I don't. What? That's fine. You will soon. I'm going to buy you one. He will. He really will. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Okay. I will buy you a blade just just so that you have just so you're part of it. <laughs> okay, I'll go first this time. And I see you say you say it you say the tie. I this is a tie, but but Meliodas's story of like why he's raffle is just the saddest shit in the world, bro. The man so, lives, like just oh and that's kind of why like the conversation I had earlier, the, the point I made earlier about greed. And the time frame of age, you know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. the humun- homunculus—they weren't alive for long, yeah. but they had all it's of this so packed cold, into them. You know, right? So, if you say you say with what you just said, if Wrath were had lived longer, even though he's considered older, but had he if had he lived longer, do you think he would be an easy win? Do you think it'd be an easy win for Wrath no. over Meliodas? No. Hmm. Because with the time is how Meliodas' Wrath builds because of what he's going through with the time. Whereas Wrath the Humunculus or fucking uh, King King Bradley, it's, it's more so it's within him. So his Wrath, I don't think his Wrath grows with time. I feel like it's it's a matter of the experiences. The man causes wars for fun. Like he's like he's he's a militant. That's that's what he is. Mm-hmm. I'm going to beat the shit out of y'all with this fucking sword. So I, I guess for me, I never saw him as actually wrath. Right. Like and I think that's why I don't see it as a tie. His wrath comes in when he's fighting or whatever. But Meliodas is the same way. He's Nonchalant and chill all the damn time, except for when he's fighting. And then you so, see, so yeah, that was that was the whole thing. Ralph, the uh, the writers wrote because they said how he get that as his own um, 
though. He said, why did they use him as a as an homunculus? And he explained it. He he uses his rep through his fighting. Right. Okay. Right. So I've got a question. And can I I'm, I'm gonna cheat for next week a little bit if y'all are okay with it. I okay. want uh-huh. to give one of my characters right now in my explanation. Oh, you say so you're not even gonna think about your character. You just I already just... well, I already know this one off the top. It's... I got two off the top of my head right now, too. I already got well, my whole list. I'm using this because it, it's my wrath one. Go, go ahead. The reason I would say it's a Meliodas win is because wrath is something that's earned. I understand that King Bradley has the the souls of those who've been, you know, saying hurt and anything like that, and blah blah blah. Yeah. But yeah. none of it is his wrath, right? He's acting out wrath of others. Of if others. that makes sense. Right. Okay. So Facts. with Meliodas, you were talking about the time frame and what's been done to him, and this, that, and the other. Yes. For me personally, I give. Can... Go ahead. My wrath character is Mob Psycho. Ooh. It's Mob from Mob Psycho. Ooh. You get to a hundred. I'm so good with that. I'm Zero so to a hundred, real quick. Like, real quick. Well, not only. Ooh, I like the way you're thinking. Real quick, because they show the percentages throughout the episode. It's not the, only every, episode. every episode, right? Yeah. It's, not it's like five percent, one percent, ten percent, and that's how that's how Meliodas is. He's yes. he's got that same ticker really. If you you what you can watch episodes and see his ticker yeah. just counting up every episode. Like he gonna spaz in like three episodes, bro. You see it coming. He yeah, gonna he spaz goes. in three episodes. And when and he spazzes, it's like high, bro. <laughs> Damn, it's I like so the way you're thinking. Bro. It's so right. sad. His wrath comes from the fact that he has to continuously forever. Watch his fucking loved one die. Bro. Die over. And that's that's and really over. where it is. Because he was a demon and she was a fucking goddess and they fell in love with each other. Their fucking families like punished them by making him immortal and her. She's a Capulet. He's a Montague. Over and over. And he has to <laughs> watch her fucking die. And as soon as she's like, Meliodas, I remember she dies. Yep. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Every fucking time, bro. And that's where his wrath comes from. And the last one, the, the the one, the reincarnation before Elizabeth, when she died, this nigga literally wiped out the whole fucking country. He said, like, I'm done. He just snapped, bro. Like, he was like, oh, okay. Yeah. And I, it's funny you mentioned wrath. You know, I already got my, my pick for wrath upside my, uh, uh, like I said, it was a curveball. I'll throw it out right here. Sailor Saturn from Sailor Moon. <laughs> I can agree with that. I'll take it. I'll take it. That's the first person that popped in my head when I thought of Rav. I'm like, listen, get get off my list, man. Get off my list, bro. (laughs) We're not doing the list. We're not doing the list, but I just... That's a sneak preview. To help explain, I I wanted to throw that out there. That was the only reason I brought it up. So that's why I say Meliodas for the win. Go for it. Um, Who died first? In uh, Full Metal Alchemist, Wrath or Pride? Pride. Mm, I think Pride. Well, I think Pride died. Who first. died first? Um, yeah, yeah, who died first? Yeah. Was it Wrath or Pride? Bradley was the last one. To, yeah, it was Wrath. Yeah, I think Bradley was the last Pride. one. To... Was it no, Wrath who died, or was Pride. it Pride who died last? Pride was the last one. I think. Yeah, Pride. I think was the last one because that's how he got. Re- I think he was the last one. Either him or Wrath, because I gotta, first, I gotta look that the up. First one to, I, Reed I, I, is the I, last one to die. I say, I say that Reed is the last one to die. Reed, right. Reed is the very last so one he, to die. So then yeah, because he switched you, sides. That's right. He switched sides. That's right. So who, uh, who died first between Wrath and Pride? I'm looking. I'm looking it up. I want to say Pride. I'm, I'm thinking it was Pride. I yeah, was either right. Yeah, I can't. I can't remember. It's been a while since I watched some of the Alchemists. Because Fury was mistaken, the oh, it was like Rath a boss was, fight. When Wrath died, that's when Pride pretty much came up. Uh, Afterwards, as a as a big reveal of oh shit, this is the sin we were looking out for. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, right. yeah, I think you're right. Okay, I think that is so, when the twist happens. Is after Rath. Right, so this is this is the reason why I bring that up. Um. First and foremost, the definition of wrath is extreme anger. Um, 
And wrath can be defined as an uncontrollable uh, feeling of anger, rage, or even hatred. Wrath also often reveals itself in a wish to seek vengeance. Hence, Full Metal Alchemist, uh, wrath. He's always right. seeking vengeance um, with just him spreading uh, his thought process throughout the kingdom, right? right, right. Here's where I ask that question. Wrath may persist long after the person who did another a grievous wrong is dead. So okay, even though oh Wrath no. was dead, his pride lived on to continue his wrath. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Wow, that's deep. That was good. Yeah. yeah. So just looking at, because I was like, wait a second. I'm thinking, and I, I was thinking of Mel- Meliodas for a second, but when you look at Meliodas, yes, you look at his backstory and you look at that story of why his wrath is building. But throughout what we see, when is he ever extremely angry? Only time we see that is when Elizabeth is in danger or his friends are in danger and he's in a serious fight. Right. That's the only time you really see it throughout the series. I haven't seen the newest uh, season yet. I'm, I'm trying to catch up. But that's the only time we really see because we see him as a laid-back oh, yeah. character. He's a laid-back dude, yeah. Wrath from Full Metal Alchemist, on the other hand, just by reading off of what wrath is consists of and the definition of wrath itself, I believe that that tie might just have gotten a little more full metal, full metal alchemist. Yeah, mm-hmm. I can see that just with the leave behind portion. Yeah, that's great. That that tie it now. Now again, I want to I want to bring attention to this. Remember how we were talking about. Uh, animated or adaptations versus source material that little piece right there more than likely was part of source like their logic when they made this show right Mm -hmm. when they made that manga that anime that was probably a actual a key piece in how they wrote that the question is would it get lost in translation in translation if they did the movie something as simple as that something as little as that that we we we've seen it. We've watched it multiple times, more than likely, and we didn't catch that until just now having this conversation. Yeah, so but it makes very... so much more of a difference in the storyline. Yet, if it goes to live action, would they put that in there? Would they still do it in the same order? You know what I'm saying? It, the little things like that that are missed, I think, mm-hmm. is is where a lot of live action stuff could really thrive. But sorry, side quick side aside from that for that. So. Go ahead. No, no. Very on. But yeah, Very on. I, I actually I, I, can't I was argue listening with that. to what everybody was saying. I'm, I'm like, you know what? Let me look up the definition real quick and let me see what uh what the actual sin itself says. Like I was even trying to think of how Wrath died. I don't believe I don't believe he was hacked to smithereens or anything like that. I believe he, he was, was just stabbed to the he chest. He was dismembered by my he, had to. he was dismembered by he was dismembered yeah. by a scar. Well, if that's the case, um, if you look into each seven deadly sin, there they is a die, punishment right? for each sin, and that is the punishment for a wrath. Is dismembered just alive. Yeah. Hold it. What's the punishment for lust? Uh, she was incinerated by a Royal Mustang. I know, but is that the punishment? <laughs> <laughs> lust, that's just punishment. of all time. <laughs> I, yeah, I know he's. I know Roy. Yeah, Roy. That that right there. Yeah. Yo, that by far is that's, that's, that's my favorite scene. I don't care yeah. what anybody that's says. That, <laughs> you guys talking that bringing that so up good. to gave me goosebumps. Yes, mm, yes. Mm, mm, mm. That's Roy must that say. felt so good. Let's just pay homage to yeah. Roy a little bit. So <laughs> the punishment, man the punishment, beast. lustful piece uh, people, those guilty of committing a deadly sin of lust, will be punished in. Hell by being smothered yep. in fire and brimstone. Yep, that was a oh, smother. Wow. That boy says that. And oh, she that definitely was smother. freaking smothered in that. It was that's so wicked, going. bro. <laughs> bro, so like, you just gave me a whole nother love for Full Metal Alchemist now. Right. Like, that's a whole nother piece that we didn't even think, know okay, about. They, or think so about. Every single uh, sin dies ironically. 
like. But yep. it's not ironically, it's the actual punishment. No, well, yep. no, but meaning like based on their sin. So like yeah, blood, yeah, yeah. Gluttony yeah. was eaten by pride. He was, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like, I do have, I have a question. I have one question. I gotta know greed. What is greed? What do you like what's oh, greed's what punishment? Greed's punishment? Yes. I was gonna say he was killed by by father. Cause because <laughs> greed no greed killed himself. He gave himself he, up. Yeah, because once love died, he lost his will to live. Yeah, but how did he actually die, though? Father killed him. He he died by giving himself the father. Yeah. yeah. Father yep. yeah. Um, so in other words, suicide is being boiled alive in oil for all eternity. Damn. So was he boiled in any way, shape, or form? Not no. necessarily. Not for wrong, I mean, not, not, I don't think so. Uh, like he gave to... himself to it. But you have to give yourself up in order to be for something like that to happen. I'm pulling up right now. I got. I got to watch. I got to go watch the Greek fight. I got to go watch the Greek fight now because I think it's something. I got to see this. I'm pulling up right now, gentlemen. So while he's pulling that up, I want to throw a quick uh, reminder to everybody. If you are, if you get a time, get some a uh, few moments, feel free to go vote for us. Last gamer standing competition is still going on into next month. You can vote daily. Uh, so if you can go on there, throw a vote out. We're trying to get to the top so we can get uh, actually hopefully be in game informer. That is kind of like one of the grand. Don't projects. give up, but get stop. I'm coming for that number one spot. Exactly. <laughs> so it will be takes y'all. So we're definitely, you know, what I'm saying. Hope y'all root for us. And like we said, vote, vote, vote. I'll put that in there. It's in the chat as well. So, yes. Oh, right, what we got here? Is he, oh, boy, is he burning? What? I know he gets, like, he gets dipped into something, but I don't, I didn't know. If it was yeah, because he's metal. He has to be, he has to be boiled. That's the only way to kill him. Yeah. You have to melt the oil. Melt the heat. I mean, melt the metal. Yeah, but I couldn't remember if it was oil or not. Oh, well, same. Basically, yeah. yeah, basically. Yeah. Wow. So, he, so yeah. and, and, and full metal alchemist is amazing. She was yeah. amazing. Yeah. So, it, so in full metal alchemist, that's how he died. But in brotherhood, he died going into father. Right. Time frame and timeline are different, though. Yeah, they changed it in Brotherhood. I know they changed yeah. certain things in Brotherhood. I'm yeah. wondering now. Now here's a question, and it's something we'll have to look into for later. We can come back. That'll be everybody's research for the week. Um, did the deaths change from FMA to Brotherhood? Did they make it more digestible for the public? Quote unquote. Mm. Mm. I would say that some a of yes. Thing? Was that a censorship thing? You see what I'm saying? Right. So that's something we can look into for, you know, a later conversation. But, but yeah. Okay. So I, I'm with, I am with Wrath taking the dub on that. Is everybody, I guess, is everybody in agreement with that then? Yep. Yeah. I'm going to still right. say, I'm going to still say Ty. I can respect that. I can respect I respect that. the tie. It's just that little fact that I came across that, Made me change my mind a little bit. Okay, well let's let's put it to a vote then. Who's saying tie? How many do we have for a tie? I can go tie. Could be a tie. tie. I will take a tie, but based on what we just uncovered, I gotta give it to uh, Raph. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I gotta rewatch for metal now Raph. with this new knowledge. The new knowledge, right? Uh, yeah. So we got two ties. We got two Raths. Um, Jay. You are uh J Star, you the last one. You know what? I'm I'm gonna give it the wrath. Wrath, all right. Yeah, I'm gonna wrath with the, so the Wrath inks it out just just barely. So mm-hmm. I'm gonna do a quick line up here then. And we're wait, gonna we put... gotta finish it out. There's one more. The unknown sin, and that is despair. 
which is represented by Elizabeth in the Seven Deadly Sins and by Father in the uh, Full Metal Alchemist. Yeah, True. you didn't know, huh? Okay, True. okay. Well, I was only going on the seven, but I'm with it. I can rock with it. I ain't got the images for him. I'm sorry, so we just have to have the conversation. No, nah, that's fine. <laughs> uh, since I brought it up, I'll start it. Okay. Uh, I, got, I got it clearly um, for Father because his whole existence is based on how he cannot accomplish. So he's always in despair because he feels like the only way to achieve his goal is to reject the sins that he created. However, by rejecting them, it makes his accomplishment, his his goal of ruling the world impossible. So he's just okay. here all, all at all times. I feel you on that. Where Elizabeth, I, her despair, like she kind of counteracts her despair with hope, like by taking appreciating the sins for who they are. So, yeah. Okay. So, okay, I have a question with with Elizabeth despair. Would you say her despair comes when she remembers? Yeah. Her history. Yeah. So, out of been. all her lifetime, we'll just we'll just say since it's three, look, they look, the prim is three thousand, right? Three thousand years. Yeah. So, with all her lifetime, we'll say she lived like to be fifty on average. And she get three days out of them years. Yeah. That's it's, a lot of you gotta think about the despair. I mean, that's a lot. It is a lot. I mean, but is that it really is a lot. despair? But she doesn't rem- like she doesn't remember it. She she when she remembers, like if you think about it, when she remembers, that's when she gets in that mood. We don't know per se that this Elizabeth. Mindset was the same as the other ones they remember. This it was true. different That's people. What I'm saying. That's why I gave it to Father because there's too many variables. Like Father is just always in despair, whereas Elizabeth is majority of her time is spent being hopeful and stuff. And then that little three days hits, and it's like, ah. but then she dies, and then it starts all over again. Continuously, forever, just so Meliodas can fucking be raffled and punished. It's, oh my gosh! Now I think of it, it's so sad, bro. <laughs> Meliodas' life is hey, sad, bro. <laughs> don't spoil too much, cause wife in the truck and she can hear y'all. She ain't, she gonna watch Seven Dead Sins. Oh, okay. Okay. Hey. Okay. Hey, it's sad. Okay, so sorry. So okay, so with the despair situation, as far as father being despair and Elizabeth being despair as that that extra sin, um, I have to go with even with what you're saying about the sadness. Which I can agree. I still have to go with father. I have to agree with father. And the reason is you have to think about it from the beginning of the storyline. Yes, the storyline is not as long, but he's been he has been himself for centuries now. Yep. Mm-hmm. Has been himself for centuries. How many lives, how many wives has he had? Had he said has he had to bury in this search? How many lies has he had to give to cover up the fact that he's a homunculus over these centuries? Mm-hmm. How many kids has he had? Possibly. These are just the two that we know of. Right. How do we know that he hasn't had in each day of life that he hasn't had kids that were just as powerful as Ed and Al? That's a whole nother storyline that could be told from his previous lives in different eras of, of time. Like the era of time that this one is in is like pre like, it's still technically like steampunk ish to a degree. Not really steampunk is the wrong way to put it, but like pre 
pre coal, pre you know, pre mechanical ingenuity. I don't know. I don't know the best way to say it right now. Do you all get what I'm saying though? Like the era right. that they're yeah. in, like they've still got steam engines and things like that, but they have alchemy, right? If we backtrack that timeline to let's say the feudal era or even let's say the medieval era, but they still have alchemy, right? What if he had two other kids during those times? Let's say he had two daughters next time back then. Did he go through this same situation with his two kids? You don't know that. The amount of despair that he's had all these families over all these centuries and all these reincarnations is yeah. insanity of in and of itself. The amount of despair like that we see in him now, he's almost dead to the world at this point when he's dealing with Ed now. That's right. True. You know? And so to now end it all, quote unquote, I think his I think his despair is far worse than than hers because he lives with the knowledge from a child that he's this person. You know what I mean? That he's this old. That every that everyone that's reborn, he they know this from day one. Like think about being ten and knowing that, that your father. Think about that. Your father. Like. <laughs> And you've got the humun- homunculus that you've been creating this entire time with you every every rip. Yeah. Every rip. Like that's gotta be some next level insanity. Yeah, that's fucking is wild. So I would have to go with yeah, father. That is, that's I go with father. I don't have no deep explanation. Y'all don't feel about the explanation. I'm gonna go with father. I love when y'all agree with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gotta go father. I mean, I, you made a very compelling argument. Can't can't lie there. So, I, I'll, I'll definitely agree with, with the father aspect. Um, I would love to agree with the Elizabeth point because that is sad as shit. It ain't is, a lie. It, really is. It, it really is sad. It's it's, it's like so an ever sad. ongoing uh, Romeo and Juliet story. Legitly, bro. Right. But uh, but I think that's the part that, that allows father to win in that situation, though. Right. I think that's yeah, the not part only of that, it. But it, at the same token, in one's despair, you could literally find every sin. Yeah. Like, yeah. If, depending on what type of emotion you're feeling, you're in that disparity. You could you could go into gluttony and just eat your feelings away. You could be wrathful. You could be greedy and just want someone else's, uh, you know, life at that time. You could be lustful in your disparity. So, um. And the fact that all those sins came from father, I mean, I, I, that's where I have to get yeah, it to. I was about to say, yeah, I was like, I'm about to say, like, the fact that you just brought that point up, like, I hadn't thought about that at first in, in any capacity. That was a bra- that bravo, hat, hats off on that one. Cause that explanation, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, facts. Like, fuck, F says, it's facts. <laughs> that's all I can say. Uh <laughs> huh. All right, so the the final point of the, the the exercise that we had, I'm gonna bring this up. Now we got it. We had a tie on gluttony, and I, I definitely I think that was a very good point. The, we came up with very good points as why that was a tie. So I'm gonna leave okay, them both wait, on the screen. Do me a favor. Can y'all like look just over the ones I missed because I came in on Eskinon. Uh, um, we gave um. So Lush for Ban, oh go ahead. Lust was Gulther. Yeah, we gave greed to Bond. We gave mm-hmm. uh, shit. Sloth to King. We gave Sloth to King. We gave Gluttony a tie. We gave Envy to Envy the Homunculus. Uh-huh. And um, we gave Merlin the uh, shit. What the fuck is the name of her son? Merlin and Gluttony are the tie. Yeah, Merlin, yeah, Merlin and Gluttony. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was the tie. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we hit all of them. That's right. So, you okay, I just got one question. Bond won yeah. over Envy? Of course. Yeah. Um, yes. No, greed. No, over greed. Mm-hmm. Me over greed? Bond is greed. Yes. Yeah. We said greed. Do you have a counter argument? We said greed in, in the in Hamon- FMA embodies uh, the same, like, in your face, however, 
Bond is more of a living uh, embodiment of the sin itself. Yeah. Everything he does is in is in grief. Like it's not just like I want everything. It's just fucking he's walking more so selfish. And the man literally like get the, the, the motherfucker took immortality, bro. You can't be more greedy than that. I guess I can get it. I, I can I rock that one. I thought that would have been a tougher one. <laughs> okay. No, nah, that was the easiest one, actually. Bro, I was That's probably the easiest one, one honestly. The easiest one was Envy. Like, it was Envy, just yeah. yeah, true. Because Diane don't do shit. She really doesn't. <laughs> that, one and, that one and Sloth. Envy and Sloth were the easiest ones. Yeah, so. yeah Diane, the only thing she gave me, she, she wanted to be small because she thought she was only giant. That was the only thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she wants to fuck by the until she realizes the king. So right. that's a whole nother right. Yeah. Thank God because King been fucking fiending for her forever. <laughs> the that that's yeah, that's a that's yeah. would be definition of simping. He would be definition of simping. Oh, yeah, and I don't even like that. I don't even like that term. But yeah, King definitely. <laughs> okay, so Last part of this, if we yeah. take and we'll interchange gluttony, okay, the characters on this screen right now, and place them in each universe, how would that change the story? So, oh, for example, if be- the winners, right, FMA and or well, Seven Daily Sins. First off. If this list goes into seven deadly sins, the whole story changes because Meliodas is the main character, and now we have Raph, uh King Bradley as as the main character, the main right? Character, right, and that that means the whole sad story. So sad. The whole sad story don't even exist anymore. Uh huh. But think about it; he's a warrior, and it's so. It, but again, so, so it still works. I was about to say, <laughs> yeah. wouldn't you get more of a meticulous military? Amanda was directing the seven days. Right, right. Because right. right. now that whole like laxadaisical uh Meliodas that we love that's just like pretty much chill until you piss him off becomes a militant like yo, we going to war, we doing this, like everything now <laughs> has, has structure. Structure <laughs> and meaning. You know what I'm everything has structure. So. That's yeah. a that's a different story. <laughs> Whole different. Yeah, now, different. on that same note, you put all those individuals from Seven Deadly Sins now into the Full Metal Alchemist world, and make them state alchemists. Like, I okay. Here's here's I'm gonna throw this out. Escanor, I, I was gonna say thank you for coming out. Meeting, God bless. Good night on that one. <laughs> you heard Escanor meeting what's his name, Brigadier General uh, Armstrong. Armstrong. Ooh, Escanor ooh, beating Armstrong. Fight. Think yeah, about that interaction. That would, a, that would be a very fun fight. That That's would be a very fun fight to watch. Yes, most definitely. Well, I mean, majority of our characters are from Seven Deadly Sins, so oh, that, uh, no, I, it changes full meta up. Completely. If I would have them meet, if I would have them meet, I want them to meet at a bar at night at first, just so he'll see little Escanor. And then turn around and meet him in the day. <laughs> like, Nick, you're not the person I met last night. <laughs> Tis yeah. me. Fine, sir. So do, do you do you think it would become a better show? Do you think what what, what do you think? Either It'll one. be hard. Give me give me your give me your thoughts. I, I definitely think- believe that the brothers would have a harder time. Yeah. Okay. A much harder time. Okay, why? Well, we'll go directly for the obvious reason. Let's say they battle Bond. They defeat mm-hmm. Bond. They think it's over. Two weeks later, <laughs> what's up? He comes uh-huh. back to life. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Like, that's, yeah. that's difficult, number one. Um, pray to God the brothers come across them uh, during the nighttime so they don't have to deal with Escanor the Beast. Yeah. Um, 
they go yeah. out for an adventure and you got Gunther saying, no, you're not. You forgot that you're going on an adventure. Right. Um, yeah. Legit, <laughs> <laughs> man. The, yeah. the only written, the only true written fight that I could see with these new characters in FMA is maybe with King okay. and the yeah. brothers. Yeah. Okay. Other than that, I don't see a fight happening anytime soon. Is it okay? I don't and see the head. story proceeding. Okay. Yeah, not fair. So, so here's the question I'm gonna add. Then here's a question I'm gonna add. Then. Do you feel father? Because we said he won as well. Do you feel father would have achieved his goal before Ed and Al were born? With these as his new yes. homunculus? Well, no, because yes. despair comes from wanting to reject the sins. And so if he keeps to rejecting them, then he doesn't accomplish his goal. So you feel that the stronger the sins are, the worse, the be- the worse his depression would be. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Or his despair. Yeah. Okay. If you embrace the sins, then. So can- hold it. So in that same yeah. point, in that same point, then would he not have given his sons more abilities then? Who knows? Because if he's trying to counteract the sins that he created. Right. That's why he let. I personally think that's why he let his son, his his sons go, go wild. Like I think that's part of the reason why he didn't shut him down early, because he yeah. could have easily done it. You know what I mean? Right. He knew that they were state alchemists. He knew all of that, so he could easily shut his kids down at any moment he wanted to. He was hoping that his sons, his other creations, would come back right. to clean up it to clean up his mess. Yes, right. So I mean, yeah. We we could possibly see them have more of uh, see an upgrade of their power. Sex. However, he's so just, just throwing it out there. But he still loses though. His despair yeah. literally comes from rejecting the sin. Okay. Right. As far all as right, his goal. Right. overall goal. Okay. Oh. All right. All right. So well, okay. that that was kind of the point of that. I one. Wanted... Go ahead, Jay. I wanted to add something to our little um, (laughs) (laughs) so I wanted to add it to um something to the the little test we got for the seven cents that we're picking. If we if since we're not you know disclosing our picks, if we pick Mm -hmm. if multiple people pick one person, we're gonna consider the the true definition of that scene. Agreed. Okay. I mean that makes sense. I mean, so like, sense. like since we already took him off, let's say like at least three of us, all of us, said Vegeta for pride. Of course, yeah. Vegeta would be the center right. pride. Right, same pride. Mm-hmm. It's literally his environment. Right. So yeah, I already I feel like it's one that's gonna be that I just off the top of my head. That's why I want to add that to that okay. little little thing we're doing next week. The caveat: Speaking I will have a different list than yeah. everybody. I'm going to make sure. Of it. Yeah, I and that, that got me thinking. Just, like, it's just almost like know. playing scategories. Like, oh, <laughs> scategories, right? Like, oh. It's like playing scategories. You don't want to have the same word. Right. I'm about to be like, okay. Yeah. I see so much anime. I'm a, I'm y'all, to hey, crazy, <laughs> we got. I want to make it tougher. You can't have characters from the same anime. You can only pick one per anime. But how oh, that's what I was thinking oh, anyway. For sure. Like, oh, one yeah, yeah, that's what I figured. I, we're right. okay. That must have been yeah, a given. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was just, I was just, I just had to say that because I thought of two characters that fit two different from the same anime. Like, not nah, be too easy. I mean, we literally did DVD even though they fit for everything. So. Yeah, I mean, I use Sailor Saturn, so I can't use anybody else from Sailor Moon because I picked Sailor Saturn. So. Right. Right. And I will say this: those who re- who revealed anything today, feel free if you want to change that one to go ahead and do so. Yeah. So, like, I use Mob Psycho. I may keep him, but I may change him for Wrath too, because there's always there's a, pl- a plethora of shows out there that we can yeah, pick Wrath, from. So I feel like Wrath is going to be an easy one to find. Yeah, which is why I'm yeah. going to the All you gotta do is look at all the angriest characters yeah, in anime exactly. and then just pick one. Right, just yeah. throw a dart at a board pick and one. You got one. <laughs> Roll a d20, see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Dude. well we're at the we're at the three hour mark. We are. I've got enough content we can keep going. 
We, so I'm down for you. I leave me, it to bro. you all. I'm with the shit. It is a Saturday afternoon. Well, it is a Saturday afternoon. Everybody's got stuff that they're doing right now. So we can run our normal next hour and then see where we are there if you guys want. Or we can cut it here. What's everybody feeling? Well, What's the last topic? Depends on what the last topic is. I can't can't really think of anything else. Well, but... I gotta roll from this job to the next job. All right. Okay. All right. So the next job is a little more on foot. So I might, I may be able to watch okay. and chime in via the chat if you guys continue. Not a problem. Um, okay. But I just want to thank you guys for inviting me to this. This was really fun. Uh, thank you for Not considering me uh, to join you guys. I look I forward appreciate to it. further episodes. You know my, you know the way to reach me. Shoot me the the link. I'll I'll watch. I'll chime in and yeah, anytime, deaf. fellas. This was fun. Yeah, you're, I appreciate, you're, I appreciate you're it. The, we, thank you. The, the homework. So you yeah, you're, you're part of the homework now. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> yep. you if nothing else, week. just drop you know drop it to us. You know, what I'm saying in the chat if you can't make it next week, right. just drop it when we uh when we go online. So definitely. Yeah, definitely. I'll be you listening will be back. in and I'll chime in and I'll say, hey, research this and tell me what you think about that. Do an episode about this. I'll, yeah, I gladly do that for you guys. Most definitely, definitely. I appreciate it. We appreciate it. We appreciate you. Definitely. Yes, Round of sure. applause. J Star, Starbreaker Nation and Radio. Yes, we appreciate thank you, thank you. you guys. Appreciate and it. He will be back. He will be back. Well, you have a good one, sir. And we shall keep going going on. Oh, wow. Sounds good. You have a good one, gentlemen. <laughs> all right, you too. Bye bye. All right, all right. Oh, he there you go. I was like, infamous. Where'd he go? He dropped in, dropped out. There we go. Well, he on it. All team, right. right? I know, I know, I know. <laughs> you forgot to so, roll. <laughs> so, all right. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring up a quick small point because the next point, the next big point that I had mm-hmm. is the uh, the shows the the new Marvel series that oh, are coming oh, out. We can, oh, we can roll with point. that. Oh, we can roll with that. So, okay. So before we get into that, though, I do want to bring up one little point that I I found out recently. Um, YouTube is going to be removing, or they're talking about removing the dislike button. And they did this whole little spiel about why they're doing it and this, that, and the other. Mm-hmm. Um, I personally think it's a stupid idea. Uh, they're saying, you know, well, we don't want people to get spammed with dislikes and, you know, stopping them from doing things. And my thing is, but if someone's doing something that shouldn't be done, you know what I mean? There, that's how you let people know. I understand there's the whole, oh, there are people who are inconsiderate, you know, and will just continuously dislike something, you know, spam it, have multiple people go through it for right. mean reasons, right? Bullying, right. things of that nature. But I think that uh, overall, if there's something that is just extremely derogatory that shouldn't be there, Seeing something with a bunch of dislikes on it automatically automatically makes you look at the comments. Does that make sense? Because people are people are gonna like it if they're gonna like it. It is what it is. Yeah. But having that that op that option to say no, this is not right. Like we've been, I know me personally, I've been saying they need a like a a meh button. You know what I mean? You have like you have dislike, you have a meh. There's so many other buttons and options of. Did you say a meh button? A meh button. Yeah, I did. yeah meh. I, people were trying to get that on Facebook for years. I, I, Facebook has <laughs> yeah, YouTube definitely not going to do it. They're not going to do it. But I'm just saying, like removing a dislike button, I don't see how that's going to change anything. What What are you guys' thoughts on on that type of situation? I mean, dislike shit. It, yeah, just this. I mean, if something's wrong or people disagree with it, they have the right to disagree with it. I mean, right, just good. because mm-hmm. just because mm-hmm. someone dislikes it. That's how they feel. I mean, they don't like it. They don't like it. I know. Right. I forgot what the recent. Maybe it was Nintendo. Right. Some uh, some big company had like a video that published. It had a. Lo- oh wait, you know we mentioned it earlier. The Nintendo with the online function with the Sega Genesis. Uh, yeah. That that video got bombed with dislikes. I I remember. I remember mm. it was a it was a kind of a big story for a couple of days. Like, yeah, Nintendo released their video about the new Nintendo Switch online pricing. And the price in the and the video, I think it had like almost five thousand dislikes compared to maybe like one thousand likes or something like that. Uh-huh. It was a very it was a very big number, but it's not nothing new. I mean, other sites get review bombed. I mean, we haven't talked about it yet, but the internals that got review bombed before it came mm-hmm. out. 
all the people putting out all those people negative scores on that movie. I mean, it's not like it's something new. I get what YouTube's trying to do, but like you said, it's a dumb. It's not the right way to approach it. What you need to do is just watch who is disliking stuff. Are they disliking it because they're generally disliking it, or are they just doing it to make a point or to do a purpose? Right. I mean, how many times have you seen people leave negative reviews for a restaurant or a place, and they never been there right. a day in their life? True. So. So how are you going to say something's bad if you've never been there? Right. No, no, I, I understand. Definitely understand, definitely agree. And I, but I think that's something that people should uh, be aware of. Like I said, kind of if they want to look into it, feel free to and do your own research on it. But, yeah, that's something that they say is coming down the pipeline. Um, so, yeah, just a heads up. Yeah, because, I mean, it's tough. It's tough out here because everybody's trying to – trying to persuade negative thoughts and energy, but it's always going to be there. I mean, even Twitch is having its issues with, like, negativity and supporting LGBTQ or people of color. I mean, they've had their mm. own issues, too. So, I mean, it's not like it's just a YouTube thing. A lot of the other platforms are also having issues with controlling negative thoughts and negative backlash. It means right. nothing you can really do about that. Unless you just right, take away right. the like and the if you take away one, you might as well take away the other. At that point, just leave it with the views. True. True. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get into our final topic here, which is the new Marvel lineup. Um, so I got a couple couple of them that were was sent to me by our, our man Sherrod here. He uh graciously gave me the plethora of talking points that we gotta go through here <laughs> for a few moments. So right. don't blame me, blame Marvel. They the ones at Disney Plus Day. I mean you I had said, to watch Don't blame me, yesterday. blame Marvel. <laughs> or blame Disney. It was Disney Plus Day. So ha- it happy is two Disney year ever- happy two year anniversary of Disney Plus. So true, true. Yeah, so, yeah, everything we're talking about today, we can now, yes. Um, yeah, we can you. We hear you now. Okay. I'll I'll make sure I went through a dead spot. Okay, yeah, yeah, no, we hear you now. Did you have something you want to say about that last topic or anything? Or yeah, so um, my experience with the dislike button is, yo, it's a lot of. So I watch a lot of 2K videos, videos dealing with 2K, like you know moves and stuff like that. Right. Hey, people who will post of like uh VC glitches and glitches in the game stuff, and they'll be posting it just as clickbait, and so people you know click on the video, they get more viewers. And right. a lot of people that I know, you know, dislike videos like that and, and putting the comment, it's clickbait, don't watch and stuff like that. Right. Like, it's not a bad button if you're using it for the right reasons. Exactly. Exactly. But if, if you remove it completely, there's no way to know. You know, it's exactly. just, you just have likes. And it's like, okay, well, if somebody likes it, people are going to, sh- people are going to like and share what they, what they like and share. But there's no way to warn someone, hey, this could be possibly you know, triggering. This could be possibly bad. Seeing a bunch of dislikes on something about a particular topic, that can notify you if something's going to be especially triggering, even if it's not marked in the, in the thing. You know what I mean? And so it's little things like that that, like you were saying, I feel there there's a better way, as Rod said, to do that. There's, there's a much better way to get that across. So. All right. So some of these I didn't get to as far as looking them up. So y'all may, may have to help me out. I'm going to start with the simplest one, and that is going to be, let me get this out the way here, Spidey, freshman year. So my assumption is, and this is just based off what uh, general I know, um, it's supposed to be his like freshman year of high school, is my understanding, as yeah. Spider-Man. Um, yeah. It's cartoon. I don't know the graphic style or anything like that. I didn't. I didn't, couldn't find any information regarding that. If it's going to be like CG or if it's going to be in cartoon, you know, cartoon status, whatever the case. They may just be, said. But... They just said animated. They haven't specified what it is, but it is high school Peter. I know okay. a lot of comments I saw were hoping it was a college freshman Peter. Even I was. Yeah. I was on that boat myself. I was like, oh, we're going to rehash high school freshman high school year Peter Parker again. Like, I get it. That's a Popular mm. area of Spider Man, I get it. I would have yeah. preferred college age because I was more like the '94 Spider Man series. He was pretty much in college at that point, right? 
But I don't know. Yeah, it could be good. It be it could be good. I mean, even that Spidey C, that Spidey CGI show on Disney Junior is not that bad. It's not that bad. I've watched a couple episodes, especially the gotcha. one with Black Panther, and it, it, it's not that bad. It works for kids. It's not that bad. Okay. Well, that's good. That's good. So yeah. So not much information on this one, but it is something that's going to be coming out. And again, all these are going to be on Disney Plus uh, here in the next year or so. They'll be coming out slowly. Uh, the next one is going to be the What If season, season two. I actually have not watched the What If season. So, do you? Is anybody have any watch comments it. or topics? Watch okay. it. Okay. There's a watch reason it. did. The, there's a reason Marvel Zombies became an animated series. I'll leave it at that. Okay. 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 So, so if, the, it's a the it's What a If series. series. It it's I'm not gonna spoil anything. Because, well, it's it's kind of not hard to spoil because it's just you know. Basically, just questions that you would want to know the answer to if things change. Right. But it is so good, so well thought out. Like it's so good to the point like you would want a series from the what ifs that they give you. Okay. Okay. I'm with it. I'm with yeah. it. I'm it. And I'm gonna watch two episodes. Man. And okay. also, if you want to see Chad Chadwick's last performances as T'Challa, they're in this series. So that's another reason to watch. But that's oh wow. It. Okay. That, that, a lot of people didn't even know who was voicing this. Right. So, hey, that's something to look forward to. You get to see Chadwood's last performances as T'Challa. That's a selling point for that one. I feel that. Well, then I will definitely look into that and watch that. I was I was kind of unsure about it, so I was like, eh, I don't know. But, okay. I'll give it a shot. The next one is She-Hulk. And this is supposed to be live action, from what I saw. Yeah, it, um, it is. It is. It is. That's, yeah, this one is live action. For those of you who don't know, She-Hulk is technically Bruce Banner's cousin. Um, Jennifer Walters is the, is the character name. Not the actor, the character. Um, who basically, she's a lawyer. She gets injured. She gets a blood transfusion from Bruce. She becomes She-Hulk. <laughs> bottom line. Um, that's the general about it. So, um, she's also one of those Deadpool type characters, for those who don't know, where she breaks the fourth wall often in our comics so mm -hmm. that's something to look forward to to see if they allow that to transpire um and then now i don't know i, I learned this one i wasn't i didn't know about it at first actually um do you know why they consider her smarter than bruce do y'all know no oh, i don't know mm -mm. they say it's because she learned how to control her rage which something is bruce cannot do because I she, gets, she technically that. would be the same thing. And she does it by she has mantras that she goes does in her head, and then she goes through old case files in her head. God. So technically, if Bruce would start reciting formulas in his head to keep his mind something to do, it would allow him to use that as like a zoning mantra to send himself out from the rage. So it could possibly help him more if he did something like that. Mm, that's interesting. Just an interesting throwout fact. Yeah. Interesting throwout fact. Um, so yeah, She Hulk is definitely one of those. Um let's see here. Do 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 the next one I'm gonna go to is Echo. Um do you all know anything about the character in general? No. I ha I haven't heard much about her. I mean this okay. the announcement was the first I've ever heard of her. Not a problem. So I'll give you I'll give you a general uh, rundown. She is a uh, she's actually the adopted daughter of Kingpin. So oh. that'll give you a little bit. Her name's uh, Maya Lopez is the actual character, and so she uh, she's the adopted daughter of Kingpin. She is deaf um, instead of blind, hence the echo. She uses uh, like she uses a uh, echolocation basically when she does it. So that's how her ears are. are trained so she can't really hear anything but the echoes and the click from the clicks oh that's cool God. oh that's kind of cool yeah that's kind of cool uh she's native american um she is daredevil support character in a lot of comics ah. but she links up with moon knight she links up with captain marvel iron fist the whole thing she's even got oh a couple parts now in, like, I see why those rumors for the that's daredevil why. and that's why those rumors were popping up yep. okay that makes sense yep all of these, and I'll, t I'll tell you as we go through, all of these are linked together. They did this intentionally. I think they may be trying to go towards World War Hulk. I pray that that's the case, but we'll see. 
um even secret invasion like that whole secret that thing is based on her working with the scroll if if you all don't know and that's another one that's coming up uh this is for you know anybody else secret invasion is the scroll takeover which we saw at the end of miss marvel the scrolls and everything like that that's what the secret invasion was that whole comic series right there um which when was that again let me see i thought i put the dates on here for that Next, one. was it early 2000s probably secret invasion no 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 that was way before i know Oh, I think Secret Empire was that, but that wasn't Secret. Uh, that wasn't that one. Mm. I have to I have to look that one up a little bit later and try to get that for you. Okay, I don't I don't want thinking but, early two yeah. thousands, but that's just what I'm thinking of in my head. Yeah, Secret's twenty seventeen. I know. Um, but yeah, Secret I Invasion's remember that been all the comments right? for a while. That's what. Yeah. Man, if Chris Evans didn't stop being Captain America, that would have been a good. That would have been a good one to do Secret Secret Empire. That would have been pretty cool as a live action yeah. series. That would have been pretty cool. Yeah. So they're they're bringing people in intentionally for the reason of that's what these shows are for. I think it's to set up Secret Invasion because Echo's in there, Miss Marvel's in there. I believe Ironheart may at some point be there. I know that all of them are in. Marvel Zombies for the most part, and that also ties into Age of Ultron. Um, and uh, New Xandar is another thing that ties into that. So that's what the Marvel Zombies portion of it. So that's going to be a whole other thing. That also allows them to bring in Fantastic Four moving forward. Um, so I have a question. Which, yeah. With all these characters coming in, right? Like it's uh, one character I'm really looking forward to that people kind of seem to forget that he's in the, in Marvel, and that's Hercules. Who? Hercules? Oh I yeah. Don't know. Oh yeah, Hercules. Yeah. He I don't know. Like, he's. I mean, kinda... they're bringing in Moon Knight, so it's possible. Cloak and Dagger. It's definitely possible. Cloak and Dagger are already out. Remember, they had the show about Cloak and Dagger. Yeah, I know no, I've been watching, but it's not, it's not, they're not tied with the MCU length. as of yet. Right. And no, I think that's they... what they, this is going to be because you got to remember they have the, like, you have all the, the Avengers spinoff groups. You know what I mean? Like, what's Coast that Avengers part of. stuff like that? Uh huh. The new Avengers, the, you know, they got all the different groupings like that that they, because they already mentioned Iron well, Fist and they... Daredevil. With Moon Knight and Echo and Captain Marvel, so that all is going to link at and for Secret Invasion, that all has to link. All right. So I mean, there's that portion of it now. As far as Hercules, I don't know a lot about Hercules' story, so I'm I know he I know he interacts with them in those in some of those areas. I just don't know the full the full amounts on it. So. I think the fact that they're bringing Moon Knight out is going to be nice, though. Oh my gosh, yes! I believe hey, that's going to be that's Moon gonna be Knight cool. is so slept on. Bro. Yeah, and then they're also bringing out Iron Ironheart, which oh is that's another. What I'm that's really what I'm looking forward to. I'm looking. Me too. Everybody's looking forward to Ironheart. Yeah, she's such a cutie. Yeah, Ironheart is supposed to be a big thing. You all, y'all know who like the story behind that, right? Yep. Riri. Okay. Yeah. Riri. Yeah. Really? So, a lot of good black class plays because of Ironheart. Thank you for that. <laughs> I'll tell you that oh much. yeah, there's going to be a lot of them. There's going to be a whole lot of those in Moon Knight. There are going to be so many of them. It's ridiculous. Like so many. It, and it's to the point that my daughter's name nickname is Riri. I'm letting her watch it with me. There you go. There you go. There you go. Uh, another one. This is. I think this one's just going to be cute. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I am Groot. That's gonna be fun. If it's like Pixar is style, that's Diesel gonna be fun. Group? Probably. Huh? Is Van Diesel voice, voice group? They didn't say. I don't know. They didn't say. I know he did before, but I don't I don't know. I didn't check. They yeah. might as well. I mean, they they gave him a couple million just to say five words, so why not? He might be, you never know. I'm saying, I don't know. I, I doubt he's doing the little group. I don't I doubt he's doing baby group. Maybe 
But I, I can see, like, I feel like it should be done like Disney shorts. Yeah, like, that's what I'm thinking. Snows should be Disney shorts. <laughs> that's what I see. Like seven minute shorts. Like, yeah. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Like, that would be the cutest little show in the world. Yeah. Because you can have Baby Groot interact with every Disney character. Think about it. That, that, so I yep. think that would be hilarious. Or he interacts with, like, Elmo and the Muppets because Disney owned the Wait a minute. That would be hilarious. Right. Wait a minute. That might be on or something. Yeah. That, would be, that would be hilarious. Now, this one I don't know much about at all, actually, um, which is the Aga House of Harkness. I actually have no clue about that, and I didn't get around to looking it up, so I apologize for you guys. Do you all know about Aga? Okay. Thing? Have you seen um, WandaVision? I have not. That's why. Okay. That's why you don't know. That is, okay. It's a spinoff WandaVision. Okay. Actually, so who was it? I'm I probably I'm not gonna lie, I probably won't watch it. Man, okay, it was slight spoilers with Agatha is the um uh, the the uh, antagonist in WandaVision. Okay, gotcha. Okay. So does she have powers kinda like Wanda's? She's a witch. She's a witch like okay. Wanda, yeah. I, I like Wanda, gotcha. Yeah. That's why I don't know if you remember early in the year where everybody kept saying it was Agatha all along. Earlier in the year. Oh yeah, that's yeah, that's from. yeah. Got you. Okay. That's what that's from. Uh, and okay. I, in all honesty, after watching WandaVision, I actually want to see that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah Was WandaVision yeah, actually worth a, the worth a look? I'm gonna tell you like this: it is very slow. It is very slow. But once it picks up okay. and you see what characters is introducing into the MCU, you're gonna want to watch it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. I would definitely say All before right, the next Captain Marvel, Marvel movie come out, you better watch WandaVision because they're gonna there's yes, someone introducing yeah, it that's definitely gonna be in the next Captain Marvel movie. Got oh, you, sure. got you. And then there's also Miss Marvel that they're bringing out. That's gonna be cool. I mean, it's gonna be cool. It just depends on the tone. I guess the other tone is for that. Right, right. Now the last one, and this is my my most exciting one. Yeah, I got I'm so glad. Yeah, 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 buddy. Yeah. So I got I I had to pull some notes on this All one because right. I, I knew y'all was gonna be excited about it like I am. Yes, sir. Let's so, go. You no, know, September ninety seven is actually when the show ended. In the yes, X I didn't I know that. Yeah, it's it stopped September ninety seven. So they're gonna bring it up right when you know Xavier got uh, attacked by Gyric, right. and then Lalandra yeah. took him off Earth to go to the Shi'ar Empire. That's where they're picking it up at. So, oh, damn. Love it. so it's Magneto, a continuation. It's a continuation. Pretty much. Hold on, hold on. Hear me out. The same people. Cal Dodd still voicing Wolverine. Nice. Lenore Zan still voicing Rogue. George nice. Bruce is still voicing Beast. Adrian nice. Ho is still uh, doing Nightcrawler. Christopher Britton is still Mr. Sinister, which is going to be epic. Uh, Catherine Disher is still Dream Gray. Chris Potter is still Gambit. So we still got the same Gambit. Side note, no, did you know not. he was the same person who voiced Spider Man, the 94 Spider Man? Did yes. not know that. I knew that. Yeah, Gambit I is the same person who that. voiced the yeah. 94 Spider Man. Yep. Uh, Allison Sealy Smith is still our lovable storm. So that's awesome. And oh, then Allison man. Court is still Jubilee. Jubilee. Side note on Jubilee, did you know Jubilee was also Lunette from Big Comfy Cat? What? Shut Did up. not know that mind blown. Jubilee you blow mind. was Lunette from Big Comfy Couch. It makes sense, though. Oh wow! It does wow? It makes sense. Now hold up, hold up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do. It. She did them at the same time as well. At the same time. I believe it. Now here's a, here's it. another one. You all know Resident Evil the game, right? Right. Yeah, She's also know. Claire Redfield. What? She also is Claire Redfield. I don't know who that is. She's like one of the main female characters in Resident, the first Resident Evils. Yeah. Wow. Did not know that. So, but yes, yeah, basically their final goodbye. Like, Manito's going to come in and he's going to say goodbye before he, she leaves the planet. He leaves the planet and blah, blah, blah. But it's that, that time frame before he leaves and then once he leaves as well. So I don't know. They didn't say anything about whether it's going to be between the Shi'ar Empire. You know what I mean? And also what's happening on Earth or what? Mm. But they're going to start it there at least 
with Xavier leaving to go with Lalandra. Time for a rewatch so. of the original series. It's been a while. Definitely time for a rewatch. Right. It's, on, it's, on, it's on Disney. It's on Disney. It's on Disney Plus. Plus. Oh, yeah. I know. I yep. saw it. I saw it yesterday. Yep. I was like, oh, yeah, let's go. Yeah. So, time for a rewatch. So there we have it. That was the majority of everything for today's show. There's a couple pieces that I left off, um, but no biggie there. Uh, oh, two two key things I do want to throw out there. Um, one is our uh, game releases. Halo Infinite is twelve eight twenty one for those who need to know, and uh, Rainbow Six Extraction is set for January of next year. So just as a heads up on that. Just get over Battlefield. I I could care less about Battlefield personally. But yeah, okay, when's the release week for Battlefield? Say that. <laughs> I don't I'm not a teams. so I will tell y'all this if y'all don't know this about me, I'm not a military game FPS person. Me I don't either. do Call of Duty. I don't do Battlefield. I don't do none none of it. None me of either. it. Not my cup of tea. Um, nope, it's only Jay. Yeah, that one's you, bro. So you're more you're more than welcome. I we can put it, we can put the segments in. Let me know next time. I'll throw it in there. But like if it's a like I like Rainbow. I'm I like I'm not even really a Rainbow Six pl- player, but the extraction has my attention because of the alien piece on it. Um so I'm interested in that. But I can do like I'm a Halo person, I like Destiny, Division, Outrider. Division is probably the only one military is that I liked that I could really rock with. So I'm not big on big on the whole multiplayer thing with the Call of Duty. Y'all been doing it too long. I'm just jumping in. I'm tired of getting shot at every 30, 20 seconds. Not my cup of tea. <laughs> I ain't even got I a never liked first person shooters. I so. haven't liked first person shooters since the OG South Park for, for PlayStation One. So oh no, I'm definitely an FPS person. Don't get me wrong, but I I prefer. I've never been one for the multiplayer versions of it. Like yeah, it's too I don't many... like multiplayer. Hey, yo, no, I'll do. No, I'll okay, do I just multiplayer. had an idea. Yeah. Go ahead. So I have a question. So I know we was talking about a meetup, and if Atlanta be the place that we meet up, I think since we all are avid old school gamers, we could go where Vocab, my wife, took me to my birthday two years ago. Yes, it's sir. It's a restaurant called Battle and Brew. Which that is a restaurant really slash bar I've heard about it. slash gaming center where yeah, I've heard they about have that. all the gaming consoles. Everything. All of them. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm with it. Like, we yeah. legit sat there for an hour playing Mario Kart on 64. Yeah. We did. I'm with it. And we had so much fun. And we drank. That we shall did. be done. That Drunk Mario Kart, that does sound kind of lit. Drunk was, Mario Kart, that's kind of kind of lit. He Drunk was Mario so Kart's always lit. Too, when we brought him. Always. So drunk, so, you play a Simpson game, Ninja Turtles, Marvel vs. Yes. Capcom 2. Yeah. So fire, bro. Oh, did y'all see the guy got, speaking of Marvel vs. Speaking of Marvel vs. Capcom, did y'all see the guy that was dressed as the um character select screen for Marvel vs. Capcom 2 for Halloween? Nah, I ain't see it. Oh, mm-hmm. I gotta find that picture. I gotta find that. I gotta find it All somewhere. Right. Drop it to us later. We'll throw it in there and uh, throw, throw it in next week. Okay, yeah, I'll see if I can find it. All right, all right. That's all we got from my soul. <laughs> one last thing, like we said, last game we're standing. Please, please, please go vote for us. Uh, I'm gonna put it back in the. It's a daily, so you can vote once a day. Right now, I believe we are in fourth place. We dropped from first, so we're looking for y'all's help and support. And that uh, it will continue throughout the month of November and December. So, like I said, if y'all can. Once a day, once every other day, we'd appreciate it. I'm trying to get up there and get that dub for the last gamer standing competition. Um, follow us again: Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, uh, Instagram, all of it. Panda Pandemonium, but at Po Pandemonium, uh, or just Po Pandemonium, depending on which one you're which when you're going to. For example, TikTok. There you are, right there. YouTube just shows us the Panda Pandemonium. Uh, vocab yeah. solely spoken.com. Follow him there. 
for the poetry, all the poetry goodness, the soothing, lilting sounds of his voice <laughs> as he continues to caress the microphone mm-hmm. and bring girth and uh, beauty to your oh, ears. So, okay. yeah, all that jazz. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Uh, also, our guest speaker earlier today, J Star with Stargazer Nation. His TikTok information is up here as well. Please go follow our boy. Uh, we're definitely gonna try to have him back. That was that was definitely great having him on the show. And uh, we also have the weekly newsletter that is still coming out. So if you're interested, feel free to drop a line. Let us know, and uh, we'll be sending those out on the regular basis. All right. Uh, it'll be weekly or monthly right now. As right now, it's been weekly. It may change to monthly. Depends on how much stuff I need to put in it. Who knows? Um, only other thing that I have on the docket. Um, somebody was supposed to be doing a piece today. I think. Did you still want to go ahead and do that, Vocal? Oh, that's right. I wasn't because <laughs> you said you had one you wanted to do today, so I was I was saving it to the end. Yeah. Uh, there's also there's also one last thing that I want to do. I want to start doing this, and I'm actually going to start incorporating this into the motivational Mondays as well. Uh, and I'll get the I'll get a picture for this for next time. There is a lovely individual by the name of Doctor Ebony who came up with a set of therapy cards. Um. They're mostly for men. I will say that. It's mostly for men. Uh, but anybody and everybody should look into it because it's definitely things that uh, can help you become a better person, uh, learn more about yourself, and in turn uh, allow you to work through different things that you're going through in your life. Um, we will eventually start incorporating some of these cards into the conversation uh, on a regular basis. I'm not going to do it today. Um, but I think starting next week, we may start adding those in. So I'll, I'll give you an example of what some of the cards may be. Uh, for example, one of them, and all of this stuff is, like I said, when we get into these conversations, it's going to be, they will be serious conversations. Now they may still get linked to anime. They may still get linked to gaming, but they are going to be dead serious conversations. Okay. Um, so for example, one of them is how did you learn about emotions growing up? Mm. Okay. Mm, Another card is uh, what do you want to be remembered for? Uh, Another card is which habits are you most proud of that lead to positive change in your life? And these are different things that we'll be talking about on a regular basis. Like I said, motivational Mondays, I'll be bringing these out a little more often and linking them with the things we already do. Uh, But I may pull a card or two when we're on the show uh, on our Saturday nights as well. So just something to throw in there because we always want to make sure that we keep everyone's mental health at the peak performance level. And so by doing these little things, uh, having these little conversations, we hope to continue to kind of give you that, that uh, what do you call it? Those booster shots of positivity, even right. though we're having, just having fun. All right. So uh, we don't, we don't have to do a piece to, today, Vocab. You do don't you want remember to. what it was about? What I said? Did I tell you what it was about? Um, it was, it was what we were talking me, about. Bro. No, you said you were going to try to find something. You want to show your art? I did. Said, I like, found it right before we left, and I said I'll do it next week. But it's at home, oh, okay, so okay. yeah. No, that's All fine. Right. That's fine. Then we'll keep you for next week. Then. No, I thought. Yeah, I thought Vocab had said something. We were talking about the uh, the uh, text message spoken word piece that you had showed me. I thought oh. you said you had another one, but I don't remember. We just had to do it next week because I do don't another one. That's no biggie. That's no biggie. I don't have anything that I was gonna do this week either. So, yeah. um, I don't okay. For those who I got, I got another. We got another piece. We're gonna add to this, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna challenge y'all on this one. For those who want to, since we're doing seven deadly sins again. And we're doing Seven Daily Sins of the Anime Verses. Do a piece about the Seven Deadly Sins. About the anime version? I'm with it. No, no. No. About, just about the a sins. piece about Seven Deadly Sins. about the pins. Oh. Oh. Yes, you can pick one. You can pick all seven. Doesn't matter. You can use multiple. You don't have to use all of them. You can use one or two. But it has to be about the seven deadly sins. 
Oh, you trying to give me back the run. I see what you're trying to do. I'm oh, of course, absolutely. Sherrod, I know you're not really a poetry person, so it can just be a short story. one page story. Yeah. All right, I see what I can do if I got some time. I'll see what I can do. If you got some time, you know. Oh, if we don't get them, that's fine. Crazy. But you know what I'm saying? We go we since we already throwing out a challenge, might as well round it out. Yeah. Might as well round oh, it out. Okay. Like this is gonna be fun. Okay. And we will do a card next week. I I know we are gonna do a card next week. Um from the from the I think that's gonna be a perfect little perfect little thing to kind of go with. We actually will probably start with those next week. Okay. Um We'll okay. start with those, and we'll do a, do the card, and then uh, go into whatever other conversations and topics we hit on. Uh, so, for those of you listening, like I said, catch us in the first part of the show. We'll do a couple couple things, get some get some newness newness to it, newness to it. Um, there's one thing that I do want to talk about that we have not talked about yet. I've been skipping over for the last three weeks now. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna talk about it next week. And that is uh, cosplay and community of cosplay. Um, oh boy. And why, why what is ama- why it's so amazing? <laughs> why the, the freeness of cosplay, why cosplaying is a very liberating thing mentally. So, with that, I'm going to send you some pictures from Dragon Con and I'm going to want you to put on there. I was gonna say I'll show you a picture that'll explain exactly why cosplay is amazing. Bring it in. I look forward to hearing about this one. (laughs) So that's what we're gonna go into. We go into. Um, I got a couple clips and things like that that are gonna be that are gonna be great. Um, some actual some people, some quote unquote experts in the field. Um, If you never heard of K Kuma, go look her up. (laughs) <laughs> see there are multiple reasons why it is but yeah we, we'll, we'll go with some of that as well um so i'm gonna try to see if we can get some cosplayers on stream next week with us as well we'll try to get a couple guests or one or two guests as far as that if we can am i allowed um, to if not huh am i allowed to shoot my shot <laughs> <laughs> Are you allowed to shoot your shot? I can't stop you from shooting your shot, but okay. Yes, you uh, you're more than welcome. You're more yes, than you welcome. Can. You can tell oh, me. Oh boy. Okay, I will give you the heads up if they are available. Yes. As long as they don't leave Do us, that. as long as they can they will come back to the show. I don't care. Okay. How about that? All right. Okay. <laughs> Let me know ahead of time if they're single cuz I'm not going to <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, if I can figure that, well, I mean, yeah. hey, by the way, are you single too? No, I'm not gonna put that in the in the questions I ask initially. No, I no. mean, like if you know who they are or whatever. Yeah. Like, no, no, no. These are, I'm, I'm actually gonna reach out to some people and just kind of see what responses I get. So we'll see what we can do. Um, not, it'll just be our general conversation about it and, and uh, the, the mental health portions of it that it, it will affect and could gotcha. affect. Yeah. So. Yeah, all I- right. Well. Jay, uh, infamous has already dropped off. It is they were they were on their date though, so they probably got where they were going. Uh, gentlemen, True. thing you want to say in closing? Anything? Okay. Well, DC internals over the weekend. We didn't bring this up, but solid eight point five out of ten. Go see. Okay. It. And if you paid attention to the post credit and Shane Shi, you should definitely notice something. Okay. Uh, if you, uh, or a certain character, how to use things. I'm gonna leave it at that. Just pay okay. attention to the to the details. Other than that, it was a fine movie. Don't review. Don't. We were talking about review bombs earlier. Don't believe the re- review bombs on this one. Go see it. Go enjoy it. Go have a good time. I mean, it's a Marvel movie. They haven't missed yet, but this is a long movie. It's a. It's almost two hours. It's two hours and thirty minutes plus. So. Ooh. Okay. Internal. Okay. It's a, it's a long one, but it's a lot of it's a it's a lore build. It's a lot of lore building. It's a lore so, build. Okay. That's yeah, so if that's not your yeah, if it's not your cup of tea, just wait for it to come on Disney Plus. If you if gotcha. that's not your cup of tea, just wait till it comes on Disney Plus. This is why we love cosplay. That's there are multiple reasons, Lord. but yes, yes, that that is that is one. I cannot argue with that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we'll we'll Man, go into argue. into into the details with some of that. Um, 
yeah, other than that, then we appreciate you all joining us uh, on this Saturday afternoon. We will be back next Saturday, same time, same Panda channel. And uh, we about to go enjoy these forests and these woods and the wilds of pandemonium for the rest of the week. Y'all do the same. I will see y'all on Monday for Motivational Mondays. Uh, the boys may or may not. They're available. They may jump in. They may not. No biggie. Uh, but as we get them on there slowly, we will get Sherrod eventually to jump on Motivational <laughs> Mondays. We got to wait for his work schedule to work with us, though. So, yeah, I have a crazy um, work schedule. And I'm, yeah, so I'm trying to get a new job, but I mean, I'm in the process. Ah, uh, nah, you're good. You're good, bro. We go, we go get it. We gonna get it worked out. But yeah, other than that, then you all have a great rest of your week. And uh, this is the Panda Panamonium and the rest of the crew signing out. Peace.